Yeah. Tell you, we have 12 buckets for Hi, a my donation own ear. Yeah. of Thank you for that uh, lovely, lovely laughter there. Uh, joining us is a pleasure, and the pleasure is all mine, Brian. Oh, I like that. The I pleasure like of being next to you every week, my King Lord. Thank I, you for joining thank you me. So much. Wow. Here to help. 
<clears throat> yes. Take a little sip of coffee. Let's have a little swig here. Hold on. Do it. Dare you. Oh, got to get charged because we're back in to Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. Hell yeah. What a thrill. Uh, this is our annual summer tradition now. Uh, Brian came up with the idea, hey, we stream Resident Evil every Halloween. Why the fuck aren't we doing Metal Gear in the summer, man? It makes so much sense. Hell yeah. So here we are, three years running, and uh, we always look forward when we're wrapping up the game mm -hmm. to the next year. Like, Remember when we were wrapping up two, it was like, can't wait to get to three, oh, man. Oh, yeah. How fun is three? Because three's like, it's a favorite of a lot of ours. Yeah, right? three, three's my favorite. <clears throat> My it's favorite hard to, to pick play. favorites. It's, it's it's one of my favorites to play. Hard to pick favorites, you know. I would say right now five. Honestly, yeah, I guess you're right. Just by sheer hours, I never played. Sheer hours. Yeah. Manga placed. Uh, oh, just man. lovability, replayability, uh, cause ability. You know, I want to play through causes, the story again. Causes ability to be the saddest character of 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 the whole saga. Yeah. What poor poor Kazuhira. Um. Kazuhiro? Who's Kazuhira is the that's the yeah, Yakuza guy. What the fuck? No, no. <laughs> What's the dragon of Dojima's name? Starts with uh, a K. Kazuma Kiryu? Kazuma Kiryu. Kiryu. You know, we uh recently had another gaming cult podcast, Brian. And yes, we did. I, I'm always blown away at Martin, who was reunited with the GCP show. Shout out, out Martin. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Yeah. Shout out Martin, all the way from the cat dimension, baby. <laughs> And Jake and Ruby and everyone else. Zach bought a boat. Zach Ennis bought a boat. Oh, well, yeah, dude. <laughs> Doc you Ryan was there. in the ocean. It, it was a full cast and crew. Brian, you showed up. Um, but we had we had a good conversation and a, a good time with our friend Martin. And I'm always blown away at his pronunciation of Japanese oh, yeah. uh, uh, sen phrases, sentences. The guy speaks so many languages. Yeah. That's, so, that's such a fucking talent, man. <laughs> awesome he knows a lot about language and he uses vr chat to speak that, with different people from different and, and it's the such smartest an interesting, way such an interesting story how it's he immersion. talked about yeah being in vr chat and and everyone wanting to speak their language or learn new languages and having yeah. having that under your belt makes you real popular in vr chat apparently yeah <laughs> that was cool pretty gnarly uh so it was pretty you guys, fucking fun to have you guys been playing some vr chat i feel like oh, i'm missing out dude and me too like it's uh Honestly, like next generation the clips, wise, the clips you put up are so funny. <laughs> oh man, it's it's pretty it's pretty insane. Just people are hanging out. It's how message boards used to be, and it's a really uh, really cool environment. Um, was the date accurate on the system still? Just the time was wrong. I guess it was six twenty four. Oh uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, playtime, not. Uh, no, no, the date, 6 24, yeah, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. They do the date <clears throat> different, right? Oh, oh I don't yeah. write dates that way. The, yeah, they have the year, month, day. Was it? I think that might be military. Yeah, yeah it was the 24th. Oh, that makes sense. We're yep. playing a, a military style game. Oh, oh here's yeah. exactly where we left off because I accidentally skipped the cutscene. And then we had to watch the movie. And then we, we thankfully, we have the HD version here to watch the movie, and now. Now that it's safe, I'll retrieve Sokolov uh, and commence or conclude the virtuous mission, I think. Yeah. I think I'm think pretty so. close to being done. Should I pick up their bodies? Can I get ammo off them? Whoopsie. Um, I oh, think... God. I don't think so. I think you can... Uh, I'm going to have to reorient my controls. <laughs> oh, ah, that's, that's fire. Oh, yeah. Square? Oh, yeah. It's been a week. Oh, that's right. All right. We're doing shoulder buttons for that. Oh, okay. Got the mic. Hmm. Okay. We'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. But uh, we do have the Discord, as always. We've got the wheel in play, mm -hmm. as you can see, and our lovely Twitch chat. <laughs> Look at everybody. Yeah, we love the Twitch. Oh, Hanging out oh. here. Look at us. <laughs> Just guys being dudes and girls being gals. I yeah. have asthma. And uh, everything in between. Having asthma. <laughs> yeah. Having, uh, hopefully, don't seize up. I might change. Brother. I, I've been told that if I change the lights in here too, it could be a little epileptic. Oh so yeah. So I try to keep it off the strobe. Only if the beat drops so heavy that it's it it's worth it. Maybe <laughs> we might have to. Pervert. It's we might have to. It's worth it. Um, you know, the beat would be so heavy, it would be worth sending 
the viewers into some type of a fit. Remember when it was called a fit? A fit? Yeah. What? Uh, like having just... an epileptic seizure just oh. you know, back in the old days. Oh, when... yeah, it was just, yeah, he was having a fit. It's a bit strange. He has fits. Hmm. Hmm. Maud, what do we do with Johnny? Ah, stick him in the rubber room. He has fits. Poor didn't Johnny. the Kennedys? Didn't the Kennedys? Uh, uh, do that to one of theirs? I think they lobotomized yeah. one of their, yeah, one, one of their of, kin. One of the kids had like brain problems. <sighs> now we're gonna make you docile. Yeah, it's uh... easier to deal with. You understand? I no. forgot. Does it? Where does he go? Sokolov? I don't know. I don't even remember like. I fight everyone. He was there during that fight, but I told him to run. So is he hiding in in a locker? I mean, it would make sense that he just ran back into here. The action button. No, that's a triangle. You can't open the thin ones. Only body-sized lockers. Hmm. Pull the bed out. No. Pretty so much... did he... Oh, I think he might have ran back towards... I just hit the... I just head to the cutscene. I'm going to put my, like... Oh, no, I do have the jungle camo on. I should have the brick camo on, honestly. Really can't pick these guys up. You huh? can kill them. I don't want to kill Ocelot. It'll be a paradox. Some would say that's cool. Time paradox. Is, um... Oh, we get to hear Sweet Mei Ling's voice in this. Uh, She's our codec call, right? No, it's... Well, or not Mei Ling. Uh, what's her name in this? It's paramedic, right. Let's, oh, wait, 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 how, how am I on food? Mm, we're good, but we got a lot of food. So let's eat, like, a rotten reticulated python, perhaps. Yeah. It's got flies on it already. Does it? Yeah, after a week of the game save, it couldn't hang. Tasty. Nice. Snake Ew. eater. Yeah. Oh, it didn't show the little movie. Wait, it, yeah, you know what? That is taken out of these HD versions. And that's why, fuck, I really do wish... It'd be cool if I found on my old memory cards a game save that was close to where we get in a game save here, and then I switch halfway through the stream once I fix this PS2 up here. Yeah. Update with the fucking PS2 situation. Well, the PS3. So I've been doing those emergency surgery streams on the on that PS3 fat, and I was waiting for a part to come in, a disc sensor, and uh, I had to file a complaint with eBay because they never sent tracking. It never came. So I was a week out. Jeez. Then it uh, processed for a week until they said, oh, yeah, they're ignoring you. Here's your money back. It was like three bucks. But I'm just down from square one again. Right. I ordered another one from another seller, but that one's coming internationally. Damn. So I think in a month, maybe, I'll get that part and have that PS3 running again. I thought they still had it in the HD versions because I remember – seeing them but yeah I, I also i need to just crank up the laser on this ps2 slim oh yeah oh where is it because i already modified the little disc uh switch the lid switch thing so i could just play it in convertible mode open body Ooh. and we got that h2 uh ps2 to hdmi adapter but if i just crank the laser up on this little bad boy brian i'm telling you mm -hmm. we'll be back in gear with subsistence or we should play the original and get those cutscenes. I think they're still in subsistence when you eat stuff. Maybe. But I don't, now I, you just get the audio. I really, I thought it was, I thought they still showed it in this one, but it was like on specific items. Rem uh, like maybe. maybe because they're rotten hmm. or starting to rot. That it they, seems that didn't do it. It seems everything is rotten except, yeah. For your calories. Pretty, pretty much everything. I could poison. I don't have any medicine, so I shouldn't. I probably shouldn't chance it too much. Let's see, though. Uh, let's have a puff. Have a little puff, huh? What's wrong? Smoking makes you... Uh, puts hair on your chest, right? They used to prescribe cigarettes to people back in the day. Yeah, they did. He's, a, he's a frail young man. I <laughs> Let me prescribe you some uh, unfiltered. It'll roughen you up. You can't... I can't... Oh, there it goes. Boom. They don't explode, do they? Whoa! Okay. That they do. Alright, enough playing around. I'll head for the Z-Exit and maybe, uh... 
that's where we find our friend. Or did he go back the other I, way? I think it's back the other way. Ah. You, know, you, you come back, and then you get it. Uh, you get the crocodile cap, the most important item in the game. Yeah, let's make sure we do get that. And then the chat will help us. Yeah. We'll guide us. Uh, and if you were in the chat right now, if you were in that IRL Twitch, oh, Eric Badur is in the chat. Eric, my friend. Ooh, meow. That's not him. Don't. That's not him either. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know why I didn't look at the button. I was like, I'll just like. Keep watching the don't, gameplay. Don't walk How away do you use the same I'm board for this take... long and you still don't know which But button. I was trying to do it by feel. And Ooh, meow. It didn't work. I fucked up. But <laughs> Eric, thank you for being here. Good to see your <laughs> fucking podcast face jam. Okay, you know what, uh, motherfucker? <laughs> this is not uh, billboards for Rooster Teeth uh, podcast face jam. Jordan Swears and Michael Imperioli. Uh... I, you know, whatever, uh, you do that on your own time. I'm not going to get involved with that kind of thing. I wanted to go to the fucking Brian. I want to go to the goddamn, I want to, we're going to be right back home. Brian, I wanted to go to the goddamn, I wanted to go to the goddamn Twitch chat to see something positive. And Eric's in there promoting fucking face jam. For... Yeah. yeah, but Rooster Teeth doesn't need any more help. We're shedding viewers like a fucking, I don't know what, like a fucking cat. <laughs> uh, I mean, Hold on, I'm going to play a song. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll get to a Discord call. I've got it. Hold on. Do you have a song loaded? I give my it, own bottle. I give it to my little daughter. I just let her drink it right from the bottle. <laughs> However much she wants, she can have it. That's you know? right. It has the... One kiss. Uh, welcome back. Yo. Shut up. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happened. I got some wires crossed with the Twitch chat there for a second. There, everything looks like it's fixed now, Brian. Yeah, it looks I think. Good. I nice think we're positivity. All, we're all good. Where is uh, my first Discord caller, sir? All right. Is there anybody out there? We're gonna talk to Sleepy PK. I love this cute little. Oh, hi, Garrett. Hello. Wait, Yo. who's? Who's cute? Oh my god. You weren't talking about uh, my cousin, I hope not. Oh my gosh, hold on. Uh -oh. I had to mute this stream, I heard you twice. Yeah, well, uh, no we'll give you a sec. Hold on a sec here, we'll do it. Alright, uh, I think we're good. I went. Oh my gosh. You're there, you're live. How's it going, man? I am, oh my god, I, I'm so excited. I've never been live on anything before. <clears throat> Nothing, like, not even, like, uh, you never throw out the first uh, puck at a local hockey game? Nothing like Absolutely that? Absolutely not. <laughs> that's live, Brian. It's in front of a live audience. And that's even worse oh because gosh. right now you can hide behind your electronics. I mean, you're, where are you? That's sitting, true. You sitting at work at a computer? Or are you uh, out in the world on your mobile? Uh-oh, Shagger. I am... Go ahead. I went. You went. Your turn, Sleepy. Hello? Hello? Can you hear us? <laughs> oh, shit. Can you Dance hear me? Class. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear I you. I can. Fine. I can now. Get out of your room! Get in your room and so, quiet! Yeah, Are you it? in your room? Are you sitting quiet? I am in my, in my, I'm in my bedroom. In yep, my I'm... room. What was that? The Beach Boys? <laughs> Whoa, it's the Shagohod. Here, uh, yeah, Sleepy, so... Sleepy, you're chilling in the room. The name, I mm -hmm. think it fits. The Shagohod's Thank on you very full much. display. You're welcome. Thank you for, uh, for calling in. What is the purpose of the call today? Yeah. 
Honestly, uh, I I don't know. I just uh, I saw like the link everything. and I was like, hey, I like up. you. I like I, you um, too. <laughs> I uh, I saw your uh, your live show uh, when you went on the East Coast. Really? Oh, you were out there. See, here's I was. Happened. Yeah. Let's bond on this uh, experience we I, shared uh, together. I, I dragged my girlfriend to it, nice. and she has no idea what Mega64 is, uh, no idea who you guys are, and I was like, it's a comedy show, it'll be fun. Sure. And, There's uh, a line in the show that particularly calls out dudes who dragged their girlfriends there. Is um, I don't remember that, but that's actually, oh, I can't believe I didn't catch that. I always, it's towards the end of the show, and I always make eye contact with people in the front row and they're like yeah it was, it was crazy i went to the <laughs> nice. one in asbury and I, I can't explain why maybe maybe you have a better idea we got there and we got a little late and for some reason the entire front row was just empty people were, were seated Scared. all in the back nobody wanted to be in the front so we got we got front row seats oh that's awesome because they're afraid yeah. that yeah. if you sit in the front you're going to be somehow included in the show but they don't know yeah that i was like performers aren't <laughs> dumb and they will purposely we choose other people well, than just well, the first yeah. front row. But yeah. we, we I don't think down. there's any part of the show. Yeah, anyway. there's 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 an audience participation, oh. definitely. But we, you know, it's a show <laughs> of hands. There is something very intimidating about sitting front row, uh, especially at a comedy club, which one of the venues was. Oh, here's dude. This scene. Mm -hmm. Have here's... you played this game before, Sleepy? <sighs> Sleepy, this is good. Uh, no, I haven't. I've only played uh, MSG Five. Oh. This will um. This will turn you into a boss fan right here. Right here. You know? Yeah, I was in, actually... I, I'm planning on playing this, so I was actually afraid of, of spoilers, but I figure... Uh, well, if you can uh, handle a strong hell? female personality, <laughs> you know, some men can't hang, you know? But I uh, yeah. welcome a strong and empowered yeah. woman, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> the boss delivers. A... She delivers nukes, baby. <laughs> That's the kind of ride-or-die bitch I'm looking for. Someone who's going to bring nukes into the equation. Someone who has access to that kind of firepower, Brian. Mm -hmm. Knows how to get it. Oh, my God. Oh, here comes the sorrow, everyone. Oh, my God. Or, no, this is the pain. Yeah, she she summons him up first. So, okay, we Murder were... Murder hornets. We were... <laughs> yeah. Just news keeps getting worse. It's predator hornets now. We, we, were, uh, we were waxing poetic, though, about uh, the live shows back when... God, life was different then. And I, uh, I'm glad that you came out, Sleepy. Asbury yeah, no, we had a great Park. time, and my, my girlfriend did, uh, did have a good time. I was a little worried it would be a little yeah, out of her, you know, out of her niche, you know? There's some reoccurring characters there, I think, that you, you recognize, yeah, I'm I, sure, from other videos. But if you don't know, it's just like, well, these are just like, this is the first skit I saw out of the, you know, chronology. But we wrote it in a way that it, it makes sense for that, I think. What a fun time. I, I'm I think it was very great. Uh, they're, they're I really dig the uh, the Jared from Subway bit, that re yeah. recurring thing throughout the show. Oh, that yeah. really got me. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> I'm glad you had a good time there. Uh, thank you for calling in as well, man. Thanks for watching the stream. How's, All right, uh, thanks so much. How's your wave two on the East Coast? We're now in the thick of it here in California again, where everything's going well, back. Well, uh... Shut down. I'm in New Jersey, and it's uh, it, I think it's a like, New York's the worst. I think we're the second worst for coronavirus. Oh, oh okay. And we're starting to open back up, and I'm like, uh, I don't know it's about like that. It. Restaurants are starting to open, and I just I I think it's a little too soon. They've been opened. But, uh, they've been opened, and I'm hearing like they closed some bars again. They're like going back. That they're like reclosing some shit. Yeah. Yeah, There's I heard the the bars and bit. and nightclubs in particular uh were were a lot of cases were traced to. So well, those are closing sounds... up again. It sounds like you're staying safe, so. Uh, oh, absolutely. We gotta get me one of those Mega 64 uh, masks. Oh, oh yeah, yeah dude. I I will say, uh, we are putting those back on sale. The 64 hour special oh, wow. that I would like to promote now is the uh, return of the masks. I just return tweeted this out. It's coming back. Oh, uh, second <laughs> fulfillment. Kuwabara, Kuwabara. So uh, look forward to uh, many comfortable trips out to the grocery store, maybe a little outdoor dining, what have you. Keep that immune system up, get some vitamin D, stay in the sun. 
Stay in the sun, wash them hands. Wash your nuts. <laughs> As Coco says. Hey, uh, <laughs> thanks, homie. Take care, sleepy. We'll see you later. All right, have a great night, guys. Thanks for the call. <laughs> Good ass call. Great ass cutscene. See, this is the part where Jack discovers that the woman, the, the, the military person that he has admired and adored his entire life is defecting to the Soviet Union. Yeah, she, could you imagine you're like raw, raw USA. We're like the tip of the spear special ops. And now my mentor is defecting to communism. Watch this. Oh, she fucking slide boom out. She pulls the slide pin she's out that easy? That, she's that good at oh CQC. God. Boom. She You look like a out. fool, Jack. You look like a fool. But then Jack, oh man, he thinks he can still stand up to her. Hell no. But he's, ooh, ooh see, ooh, he's not just, fighting to win. This controller just vibrated like a beast. See, that's that's the difference between this this version of uh, of Naked Snake. Well, this is pretty naked. But this yeah. version of Snake and later on, it's uh, loyalty to the end. See, she's coming in. She's going to do her duty. He's fighting at a half measure. That's how he got his arm broken. He let his guard down. Yeah. Um, it's, uh... It's so interesting how the characters from this game have spanned across several sequels. Oh, yeah. Like you get these characters in five. You get a ton in Peace Walker. Um, it's interesting. Like, I guess there's carryover characters with Liquid. Uh, kind of in, in Ocelot's arm, mm -hmm. you know, throughout two and four. But Ocelot really is, is a is the thread in every game. Yeah. I mean, if you guys look at it, what this really is is a is a different telling. It's not about Snake. The saga is about Ocelot. Ocelot is the son of the sorrow mm -hmm. and the and the boss. And so the Ocelot from the beginning until 4 is seeing the end it's like a, of this mission. When you find out like Star Wars is like the Anakin Skywalker saga, it's like, oh, oh, the six movies are about Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, when you realize... But it's like, really, like the thread in every game is Revolver Ocelot. Yeah. Like, he's at the uh, end of every game in the codec calls. Yeah, is he even in... I'm trying to remember if he's in like portable ops and stuff. I have a hard time remembering those games. I know it's not canon story or who knows. Yeah. Everyone considers it their own shit different. And that, guys, is the genesis of the bandana, which also tells you about lineage. The bandana meant something to the big boss. Big boss wanting to have, uh, you know, that connection to his mentor yeah. wore the bandana. Snake, a clone, the next iteration, the next lineage, the next genealogy wears the bandana just like Big Boss did. Infinite ammo. And that's why, uh, that's why, what's his name? That's why V never wears it. Huh. Because he's not, he's, he's not part of this he, lineage. It, yeah, he's not. It's interesting. He's got the, he's got the ponytail and the, and the, uh, the scar face. But mm -hmm. I, I always gave him the bandana with the mullet because I was just, yeah, I was like, can, oh, I, yeah. I, want, I want these classic look. I want these options. Once I unlocked female staff, that were good. I just played them at, yeah. in the boss's costume. I wish I would have in that white sneaking suit. Uh, Ooh, man. I need. I needed to do played that. I didn't mess that. with any of that stuff. Uh, running around as anybody else but Snake. I should. I should have. But like, I just. I loved running around as Venom Snake. Sometimes they would be uh, just straight up annoying voices. When you know. How, oh yeah. You yeah. know how the sound of Snake running. Yeah. In five, you hear that little metal clink of his little. You hear, uh, yeah, his his jeans running together. Yeah, you hear or like that sound, which Snake, I, they can you hear me? probably put some uh, thought yeah. into, like make this it's tolerable clear. because you're gonna hear a lot of it. Snake, yeah, but there's some characters where they just breathing move? wise, what they recorded for oh, that yeah. female four yeah. voice is like you funny or obnoxious because it's this repeating. There. Like when they run out of breath, it is just right, it sounds like they're having an asthma attack. Fucking good. Just relax, and um, it'll all be over before you know it. Yeah, this is uh, this oh, is they're cool. Gonna, they're gonna get me back to health here. Yeah, Stay they're gonna help me. you uh, I've seen people in worse with the new before. mechanic that this game Is featured, which was the like the survival part. Major. Treating yeah. your own wounds, Boss. doing that stuff live. She's defected. Pretty cool. We'll talk about that later. First, we've got Zero to get again. Up. He's the guy okay, who's sending you go. in, but actually the guy who's using you against what's really your best interest. 
he's the colonel of this mission too. You know, yeah. and we again we find out at the end of four that it was him trying to like re like to re get that money for the philosophers. It's for, it's that that uh, interpretation of the boss's will. That yeah, everyone gets wrong. You know, everyone everyone's got their own will that mm -hmm. it messes the message. Mm -hmm. Man, I just wonder. They always talk about give us that that Metal Gear World War Two the boss and her cobra unit the joy and all of the cobras like storming the beach at normandy where she gives birth to ocelot yeah during that, would... that invasion during that... d-day like if well how do you fit that into a game you know what never say never don't. man you don't make that a advent children's style directed by kojima cool cutscene movie that is maybe slightly interactive or like a this. telltale style game don't make me sit through the whole thing if you do it'd be have... cool to play. Uh, it'd just be cool to have think... that time. Maybe not those events, maybe, but that timeline. Is this here? Yeah, there he is. What? You see that dead body over there? Sorry, I'm pointing up there. Do you see the oh. body over there? Yeah, oh, yeah. Can you look at him? Uh, well, when I heal myself. Yeah. That's, uh, I think that is supposed to be the body of... Someone uh, who fell off that bridge? No, of... Uh, Let's do surgery first. The Sorrow. Oh, that's his actual body at yeah. this point. Yeah. Ah, I didn't know that. I've seen that body before, but I didn't know that was like him in his fatigues. Let's check that out. I think okay. so. So I don't know what I'm supposed to look uh, or use yet. So let me in look at the. Okay, broken bones, cut, uh, cut, cut, broken bone. Let's heal the cuts first with a uh, suture kit. And how do I do it again? No, no, no. I'll hold it. Oh, there we go. That's a cut. Mm. What's after the suture kit, Brian? The styptic? Or can you go straight to... I think you... I guess you have to styptic it? Yeah, well... Maybe you don't have to. Straight to bandage? You could, yeah. It's still there. Oh, uh, oh, disinfect, probably. Yeah, or ointment. Could Let's see. Be. Ointment is for burns. No, that's right. Only burns. But there we go. It's a wound. Yep. That's a wound. That's a wound. Disinfect, styptic, and bandage, baby. Oh. oh, man. He's so messed up. Bandage. I'm glad this wasn't a part of the other games. Disinfect it. It was cool for this, though. Like... Yes, exactly. And even watching the cutscene where you had... Oops, I accidentally used a splint. Even watching the cutscenes where you had to eat everything over and over and over again, I remember being like, this is kind of cool still. I uh, like that they kind of had this in Survive, splint. but um, it wasn't as, like... Oh, Metal Gear Survive? Yeah, remember it had, like, uh, doing first aid, and yeah. you had to eat and drink, and it, that, that whole mechanism... What do I do for a broken bone other splint. than splint? I did. Uh, uh, what would the bandage? next thing be? I guess. Yeah, you gotta you gotta put the splint around, right? Ah, okay. You're right. All better, snake. There you go. You feeling fine? Feeling good. Feeling great. Yeah. Feeling good. Oh, what's this? Oh. Harmonica. Oh no. No blues uh, traveler here. No, this isn't fucking Death Stranding. Once upon a midnight weary upon with something in my head. Dude, look at him. Oh. Yeah, and he must have been very clearly... I, I always felt like this model of Snake was very clearly made to look like Clint Eastwood. Not, oh, he's, so, he's so manly and rough and tumble. Not Kurt Russell. I think he's meant to look more like Clint Eastwood. Is there a more masculine male character than Clint Eastwood in a video game as a protagonist I mean you got some Marcus Hulk Phoenix uh he's pretty hoorah hoorah yeah the Halo? guys from army Master Chief is pretty masculine it's pretty outwardly oh, masculine oh I thought it was Halo it's ha Halo Jim Halo and Cortana what a cute couple see he needs a sling because he still needs the help of the boss to hold up his arm oh my god it's it's a oh my god it's symbolism Brian fuck me running they're coming to get me. Oh, here's the Fulton balloon, too. Oh. We could, theoretically,
take a call. Yes. If, if you're feeling it. What the I think fuck? I think that might be a good idea. I think I hit the right button. Oh, press this R1. Time. Press R1. Oh. I did. I pressed. Okay, I saw water. That's a. That's how you can look around and see uh, homeboy's body. Homeboy's body. Yeah. Uh. Hello. What hey. The fuck? Yo. Hey guys. So I got a lot of questions here, and Go I'm ahead, looking caller. for a lot of answers. All right, uh, I'm getting. Off. Caller. I'm getting to the bo I'm getting to the bottom of this. I don't care who's at the top, and I hope you're ready. Okay, well, I uh, want to know who I'm talking. I'm starting to, to I'm starting to speed up, no slowing down. So who's what's talking? up with this crocodile hat? Everyone keeps talking about. Um, hearing a lot of talk the about the crocodile hat. What hearing a lot of people fuck? getting excited about the crocodile hat. Yes. Hearing a lot of people thinking the crocodile hat's cool. It's exciting. Yes. It's hot. It's now. It's what's in. What is going on with the crocodile hat, guys? I don't even know what. Your name is sir and you're ranting and I've given you a forum to just Oh, I'm sorry. Let me introduce myself. Put yourself um, out there. You have to you have to sh you have to shut up. You have to shut up, sir. Uh let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Disrespect <laughs> and I'm here. Thank you. Thank you for calling in, doctor. Thank you. Uh and I'm here to set the record straight finally. We've um, had some uh, we've had some chiropractic doctors in before, but never a disrespectful doctor. <laughs> Yeah. Thank yeah, you so I'm much. Doctor uh, Disrespect. I'm eleven feet tall. Yeah. Um I am I am banned from Twitch. And I've I know heard. why. Oh. I hope we're I know exactly be okay, why. Brian. I don't know the rule I don't know toast toast rules. I don't get toss mm -hmm. rules. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't get yeah, updated. You get, you get toast, you get tossed. Yo. Okay, well I don't want any problems, good sir. Is oh, it sir? As a military yeah, man. It's, well you can call me sir or doctor. As a military Doctor, Doctor, I should sir, call you yeah. sir. All right. I know yeah. you wear a very, uh, uh, a very nice chest rig. You look very. Yeah. I have sunglasses. I wear them all the time. Yeah. I, I am banned from Twitch, and I yes. know why. Thank and you, I sir. Will Thank not you, Mr. B. Tell you. It's I, a secret. Okay. Well, we will get to the question at hand. I think in uh, reference to your original query was something of the crocodile hat is that right yeah so what's going on with the crocodile hat that everyone's like, so excited about uh, well brian is uh explained that we will get it and we will try our best uh in the try. upcoming stream well that's all i try. can do that's all i can do we're gonna mr. get mr bean crocodile hat. guy so I'm, how, can i call you a guy if you had to guess Ooh, how yeah. long do you think it'll be before you get the crocodile hat how many weeks Next before week. we have a crocodile hat. Well, I mean, Brian, you say next week. I could be filming in the bathroom at E3 by next week, and I might be busy. But uh, I if, hope not. If not, I I think next week could be a valid solution. I, hey, bro, E3 got canceled. Oh, then I'm then next week by <laughs> by all means. We'll yeah. get that. We'll wow, get that's that for incredible, you, dude. Anime that's Expo? really exciting. That Ooh, that's cool. Ava um, had a um, little lipstick gun. Look at that. I think yeah, I think that's really cool. Hey, can we spin the wheel? Oh, oh yeah, sure yes, thing. Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we can. You have any weird kind of wacky game show gimmicks on your uh, stream? Well, your sorrily canceled stream there, uh, Doctor. <gasps> yeah, it's canceled. So no, I don't Doctor, have any. Doctor, sir, you never did like a um, like a weird like like out in public against people's wishes, like privacy breaching kind of like games or little tricks on your stream. No, Nothing. I wouldn't do that unless that's why I'm banned from Twitch now. But I, don't I can't tell you. If that's I don't why. know what happened. But yeah, I'll give -uh. you. A, I'll give you a good spin. Uh, let me set right, up that timpani. Alright, give me a good spin. Alright. Hell yeah, we're gonna get a good talk spin. To the doctor. Yes, Dr. Disrespect, we're gonna get Who that crocodile you? cat. I hope everyone's enjoying uh, the sorry, sorry you got banned, but at the same time, uh, you know, I when when I see a publicity stunt, I know a publicity stunt. So good job, mm. bravo. Because all yep. it's all secrets. You could go to Mixer. It's all secrets. Yep. Oh, he got banned and it's all secrets. I see it. I see through your. Through you can your go to a mixer. Conspiracy. Head to mixer, doc. Yeah, he can head to mixer. Hey, hey guys, can I come? Can I come with you real quick? Yeah. Uh, it's not actually Doctor Disrespect. It's me, what? Bernie. What? It's oh! oh, hey, Bernie. Yeah. Listen. It, but I had to do it for the spin, you know. Yo. I hope we get. What do we have? Personal oh. channel classic. Well, uh. Bernie, I'm glad you are here with us on the phone still, so we can look uh, up one of your employees, a friend of ours named Eric, has an old personal channel. What the we fuck? could probably look up like a personal channel classic of his and. Uh, Brian, no, you, you can't actually. Would you find that full screen? That what? <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't think you understand. Like Wait, they're not what? there anymore. Wait, by they're gone. <laughs> they're 
and then he took them all down. under <laughs> under like, contract with Warner Entertainment. Yo, you got yeah. Bernie, you make your employees delete their personal channels? Uh, you can look up. Hang on. How about uh, how, how, how about we look up? Show do you want to hear? Personal, <laughs> personal, cl personal channel classic. Here we go. I got I'll one. let you pick about, mine. Here you go. I no, one. I want to pick my own. Okay, okay. Pick, all right. pick my fuck, pick my fucking nose is what I'm gonna pick. Okay. That's not uh, how the wheel works, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. All right. What, which one do you want to pick? How about street? Is Street Meals Nine available? Let's see. Street Meals Nine, he asks. Yep. Okay. Uh... Yeah, that was a good one. You still got some. Yep. There's some. Get shit it ready. Lives. There's some shit that's out of uh, your rooster it's control. Out of print. Bernie, you and Matt don't have the uh, account passwords to me or Rocco's personal channel, do you? Mm, that's what you think. Oh shit, because I, yep. I think there's some good stuff still living on Street on my channel. Seven. At least. It's really tick-tocking away. I would have picked Three one by now. Meals you know I mean? nine. Suspense is building. <laughs> Whoa! Five. All right. Okay. Find it. Yep. Ready? Are you full screen? Are you ready to go, Brian? Not full screen. Let's see it. Here we go. Oh, wait, that's not... You're not even in that. Wait. What? Something that he's there in. He Street Meals 9. I got, here, Street okay. Meals 9. I trust you. I Frankenstein. No more pussy s***. Aaron, yeah. Yeah. you found the role of a lifetime. Thank you for smoking no. Thank you for being in this movie. You're beautiful, but Fuck you're yeah, such I can't a wait disgusting for Frankenstein. monster. I Frankenstein. Uh, I can get behind that. You know what I didn't like about Ryan with De Niro? No jumping, no flying, no gargoyles. Mary Shelley, you Do you think it's like cool that you can just He's make a movie right about anything and some, for some reason people Check pay for it? it. Yep. Millions and Later millions of dollars YouTube, for it. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> I've never even seen that movie. Nobody has. No, <laughs> He's no. got fucking Franken knives. Oh, dude. I bet you my girlfriend yep. has. I guarantee mm. it. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, but if you are looking for a movie, I suggest Laser Team 1 and Laser Team oh, 2. Well, on. thanks Cut so much, guys. Off. Get that crocodile hat and I'll be seeing you. Get that bitch off. Get out of here. <laughs> Tell me don't play that. Although I do. I Shouts like, out, Bernie. I like I like talking to Bernie. Yeah, thanks yeah. for calling in, Bernie. Thank Bern. you, Bernie. Mur Bernie Burns. I hope, I hope you're okay in the UK. Who's killing them in the UK? Starting Everybody that, know uh, Bernie. starting that, that, that pond life, man. Dude, uh, what? over in the old, you know, across the pond. That's what oh. they call it in the old times, a I pond think that's life. That's what they call it. The other way. Oh, when you, oh, when you, oh, when you want freedom from an oppressive monarchy and you yeah. sail over to the newfound land, which yeah. is actually kind of found by the original owners we, yeah, we come well. to find out but then then you're fr oh because that's the old saying from across the pond well then what is it called when you move over there you're starting getting your international feet wet there you go that's what it's called so congrats bernie on getting your yeah, international feet wet again i'm sure we got some a lot of familiar faces over there <laughs> Worldwide reaching audience. Oh man, Rooster Teeth was good you know, job, Bernie. Was you, you made I your is. money, Excuse you get me. out. I I don't know if that happened. Of course it did. <laughs> Guy's got a fucking first look contract. Bravo. Who talked about Tesla's first ever in our circle? Oh, it was Bernie. He knew. He bought the flamethrower. You man. knew. He got that uh, that flamethrower from the Impossible Company. I think so. That's a big thing with podcasts. Podcasts that have oh I, I forgot you get the actual like yeah. opening here. Podcasts that had budgets would get shit like that just to show on streams yeah. and it's like everyone's talking about this flamethrower Elon Musk is selling, so we got it for the it podcast. It wasn't even like a flamethrower technically, it was like a it was basically what we all do in our backyard with a spray can and a fucking yeah. lighter. Well, they have stuff like that at my job. Like, we yeah. will maintain and clean some of our asphalt heating guns that basically hook up to a propane tank. And yeah. They have, like, a wand that you don't... It's not all one unit like a super soaker like is. But it's basically you modify that kind of device. You guys haven't looked it up since we're speaking about flamethrowers. You should look up the stand-up that George Carlin has about flamethrowers. It's it's hilarious. He talks about how George ridiculous so the good, concept man. of a device to throw fire at your fellow human being is. How is that an? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> just think about it. It's wait, to quote Metal Gear, war has changed. Yeah. Uh, you used it? to do well. Yeah. Well, now you do the ruthless shit 
but you conceal and lie and uh you know it's not obvious but oh, with yes. the with the widespread uh <laughs> reach of the internet and information and a camera in everyone's pocket yep you get a lot more footage so it still gets suppressed but some other shit gets out there there's still dirty shit but yeah like flamethrowers are against the rules now but in vietnam wh when were they still using flamethrowers probably not in vietnam I, didn't I mean, see they're any... supposed to be for, like, clearing brush or whatever, but... That fight coming up with the Fury is oh, so man. sick, though, dude. It is. And it's, like, it's almost beautiful the way his character... It, that character feels inspired almost by the way Rudger Hauer gives that speech in Blade Runner uh -huh. about, like, fire in zero gravity. Oh. Like, when he's talking about fighting in the wars... Uh, you know, all, all the replicants were used in offshore, like, proxy wars. Yeah. Which is an extent. Blade Runner is this, like, storyline extension of Metal Gear in essence. Yeah, I mean. The way PMCs operate and, like, technology and. Were there any, like, straight up droids in Metal Gear? Like, non human computers? Yeah, I mean. I guess the AI of MK, GW. MK2, fucking little droid that you had with you in Metal Gear 4. And all of yeah. the fucking. Yeah, GW is a gigantic AI. Yeah, I, I, it's it's funny, but uh, but anyway, the Fury reminds me of that that pausing, calm speech that Rudger Hauer gives about that scene, that zero gravity flames, and like that's his gun, and that's he has this, you know, ramping speech and everything, but it's it's almost calm, and I don't know, it reminds me of like, you know, Kojima watches movies and shit, yeah, and like inspires his work off of that. Yep. I wonder if there's a correlation there that I haven't heard about. Because this is just a theory I've concocted in the last 30 seconds. There might be. There might be. I mean, there are connections. You probably pulled some some theme from that and placed it in here when you needed to. I was just thinking about 2049, that Blade Runner sequel, and how good that thing is. Even without, even before they get to the, oh yeah, nostalgia wave of Harrison Ford is back in it from the original movie oh, and shit. Oh, dude, yeah. But even before you get to that, that movie, even if it didn't have that, is like one of the best movies I have seen in the last ten years. I mean, that's like high up on my list. I rewatch yeah. it a lot. Yeah? Yeah, I love oh, that movie. Man. This is a... Uh, me being pulled in on the glider and then they detach me. Is that like a SR SR seventy one Blackbird? I think it was some kind of like a NSA model. Because we're off the books now. Like virtuous mission's been conducted. Now it's what is it? Snake Eater. It will be Snake Eater. It's about to. He hasn't named it yet. But yeah. this this is our OSP fully denied if you get caught we have no <laughs> yeah. idea but uh this is this is that mission which is like i just think of metal gear one in alaska metal gear solid yeah and you getting the speech right in the beginning of the game here and it's these cutscenes with the <laughs> fucking security cam footage yeah, and now they're using what you just did which they assigned you to do as a makeup mission you know, he's manipulating you to go clear the name yeah. of Fox. But it's like, well, you fucking commanded me on this mission. Yeah. And then Boss, which, by the way, Boss was set out to... She was told to do this. Everything happened as it's supposed to. Yeah. Basically. Which is it, it, weird, because it's kind of like maybe that's how it does happen. And like it's always supposed exactly to. that's exactly it, right? Like, as you're playing this game, you realize, like, oh, maybe these missions are... <gasps> You know, I mean, again, it's like if Kojima can think of this, maybe other people can think of this. And, and then if they have, don't produce video games, they do other things in the government. If they have resources beyond imagination, they could get anything done. Yeah. Oof. It's pretty nuts. Let's take a call as we mourn the destruction and the nuclear explosion that happened just yeah. outside the research facility. Crazy. Uh, you know, the Russians are going to sit quiet for their fucking hillsides blowing up with mushroom clouds, you know? Yeah. They got enough Chernobyl shit to deal with. Even though it was a Russian who fired it. You know? She defected. She gave uh, Volgin that nuke. It was what? The Davy Crockett? 
You know what, what the coolest the coolest thing about that Hot Toys uh, boss figure is it comes with yeah. the Davy Crockett, but in both cases. Yeah. The Warheads in a case and the Launchers in a long uh, case, That's too. That's badass. It's so sick. Hello, What's Muff up? Diva. What's up? <laughs> I'll give him a second to come up. Hello, Muff Diva. What up, G? Hello, Muff Diva. It sucks because I think they mute us in the in Discord, and then they don't in the stream. Hey, how's it going? Yo. <laughs> Sorry, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm uh. I'm playing Metal Gear along at, at home on my 3DS. I don't listen, Buff Diver. I don't oh. hear any excuses, okay? <laughs> Shit. You're in trouble, bitch. What did I do? You're my boy now. You're mine. You're oh, gonna fuck. Do, you're gonna do what I say, okay? Repeat after uh, me. Repeat okay. after me, Buff. Yeah. You want to you wanna get back on my good books? You're gonna repeat everything I say. I Muff Diva. I Muff Diva. Will never leave the PPS waiting. Brother! We'll never leave the PPS waiting. And I Muff Diva will always unmute my mic before Brian picks up on me. Brother! And I Muff Diva or Diva will Always say it right. my oh, micro. Say it right. Start over again. Brother. Say it right. Brother. <laughs> and and I Muff Diva will oh, always unmute my mic before you, you Brian it? picks up on me. Okay, you got it. Congratulations. Perfect. Thank you, you so much. Oh, this was a test because uh, sometimes I have to test the audience and make sure that you know they're like uh, bright and bushy tailed. You know, wake up, wow, I, snap the system. I thought I was just having a night terror or something. No, I didn't even no. realize I was still awake. I have all kinds of dark uh, energies and powers at my disposal. She does. <laughs> it's weird. It's, um, oh, it's, fuck. Uh, it's, so, it's so wonderful. It's, uh, it's fulfilling to be able to turn a love of electronic devices into uh, whatever this uh, creation has become. You know what I'm saying, Brian? Oh, yeah. And still, I, I slap myself like I did earlier. Still thinking about, how did I get here? How are we at six... Muff, how are we at 630... No, three... Take that back. How are we at 367 episodes, Muff? How do how we get there? How we get there? How we, How do we know? It's just persistence, you know. You got he that got DIY mindset where you just you get Maybe. it done. You set your sight on the goal and you just do it. There's right. no I excuse. Like, I like the way you think. Mm -hmm. You do have the knowledge and the power, uh, and I thank you for calling in and talking to us and giving us updates. You're uh, Northern California, or I live in Hollywood, Hollywood. unfortunately. Hollywood. Mid Cal, Mid pretty much the worst place on earth. Nah, like, dude. I really. Hollywood's rad, bro. There's like producers and stars uh, and no, Kardashians. not this part. Oh, okay. Um, this is the scary part with yeah, all the disease you know, clouds flying around and nobody wearing masks. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's fucking wild in the streets. But I was thinking it's always been wild out there, man. Oh, dude, yeah. I think if you zoom out. Oh, it used to enough, be worse. Yeah. It actually <laughs> used to be much worse. I think it's always. Yeah, when, when my parents came out here. <laughs> I think it's it's always it's always getting better, but there's these uh, ebbs and flows, and man, we are in a funk right now as a whole. As a globe, man. That's why we gotta the people gotta do something about it. So we gotta be positive people, this help is, each other out. I wish. That's I why could we're here talking. Send me off on a naked mission, and uh, I don't know. I'll get something done. Oh, oh, like in Metal Gear. In Metal Gear. Yeah. I thought, no, that's what I'm saying. I thought you were I mean, gonna do like some ayahuasca and go into the forest and do a, your own virtuous mission. Uh, Nah, burning man procure canceled. everything you need in the yeah. field no burning man find you slap in the concrete do you think that there's there's got to be like certain small events that happen yearly that are like yo in secret we're still happening oh shit bro dude you weren't lying <laughs> it's going that's like down. every that's like every 45 fucking seconds i live on right next to highland avenue it's crazy oh, fuck. <laughs> oh my god are no! you okay Fuck. I'm fucking, playing Gear. Fucking police brutality. Uh, um, look, I see a blue yeah. line on that flagger. Yo. Uh, 
Well, now, uh, so Hollywood's uh, not really treating you the best. But uh, at least no, but got... I'm from here, unfortunately. So it is what yeah. it is. That's cool, man. Hollywood's all right. You got uh, you got Metal Gear Dude. to treat you. Yeah, if you yeah, live, so... if you were born there, it's like a different thing. Like LA is different if you're from there. Yeah, and you're not moving there to make it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I wonder what what is yeah. that like as a as a native to actually live there. Well. <sighs> I'm, uh, you know, I'll say I'm white, so my experience is pretty different from a lot of people who yeah, live yours. here. Yeah, but it's yours. Right. Uh, but my, my, my mom, when she came out here, she, I mean, she came from, like, uh, like, straight up trailer trash. I'll just say it. And, uh, like, her, her mom's aspiration for her was to work at Hooters, and she was like, Hell fuck yeah. that, I'm moving to the other yeah. side of the country. Wow. And I'm going to do, well, I want I wanted to go to L.A. and meet comedians and rock stars and shit, so That's she did that. That's where they are. Dude, in the 80s, yeah. when was this? In the 70s or the 80s? <laughs> Doesn't really this matter. This was in That's... the early 90s. Sunset. Very early 90s. Sunset was still going in oh, the 90s. Oh, yeah, dude. Hell yeah, yeah dude. like, she was, she was into all, all comp fun. comedian stuff. Uh, you know, your Sarah Silverman's and Brian Post saying she's in all that crap. Okay, oh, cool. Uh, nice. Pat Oswalt. That nice. was, like, Big well, that, she was, like, the, the, 90s. the old comedy Yeah, so she, she was their groupie, basically. She That's was cool. just, like, a, a hanger-on. But anyway. <laughs> so, and you were using all the terminated terminal i believe you're short because this is all the proper terminology of stand-up comedians <laughs> well on. i mean it continued, like i kind of did something similar by the time i was an adult i was like working at like uh, an, a, a big comic store here and like well, doing some you, of the same stuff that's how you learn from you know watching other people do it you don't yeah. you don't get a chance to do it unless you show up that's and right. uh, if you're determined you just gotta fucking go hey man the sweet hey, wheel hey, right <laughs> It's well, fun like, to be around creative people, but in Los Angeles and in Hollywood in particular, the, there are a lot of creative people here, but they're also self people. Everyone's got their people. own thing, yeah. It's just, uh, I don't I don't like the mindset. I got scared away from here, and I, I moved to Portland because I wanted, like, city on a small-scale thing, but and the vegan I'm here now, so. <laughs> <laughs> vegan yeah. food in L.A. is actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Any big city has got yeah. some. Not during COVID, though. I mean, oof. I bet you're. I cook everything at home anyway. Cooking all so I'm for good. yourself, yeah, yeah. But you know what? What what? That's not why I called in. No. Oh. Why did you call? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously we could talk about Metal Gear, but there's been plenty of opportunities for that in future streams. But I just wanted to say uh, to Brian, I watched HBO's Watchmen on your recommendation a couple weeks ago. Hell yes. That show uh, was really fantastic. It, every episode like had its own thing going on and just kept me so engaged. Um, I thought it was the that perfect follow up so to yeah, the casting. Everything about it, I, I, I really enjoyed. Uh, people, some people disliked the ending maybe, but uh, for me it worked. And I thought it was a very worthy sequel to Watchmen compared to the other sequels to Watchmen that came out in comic form. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like this new uh, this HBO's adaptation or continuation. Uh, it almost it, like it elevates the original work. Uh, you know, if you take those two things in tandem and, and ignore Doomsday Clock and the other dumb shit, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, like it makes it makes all of Watchmen so much better. So I don't I don't really understand the people who watched it and got upset by it because nothing in there is an honest. And even Damon Lindelof, I feel like the show is like smarter than him even. Like he, even him in interviews, it seems like he doesn't even understand how good his own show is because he he's kind of like saying centrist stuff. <laughs> it's funny. I don't know, but the writers room must have been really uh, legit because yeah that show just just nails it and it ke and there's like so many fist pumping moments too mm -hmm. we're just like fuck yes this is this is awesome yeah i i think really what it comes down to is it's uh it, it mirrors what the first one did in a lot of ways similar to how metal gear does that and alien and all the great stories mirror themselves but it does so in a in a different way in that it it uses the theme of what the original watchman did as a not satire but um using comic books to actually show pretty much what's going on in in the world but through a lens that's more digestible for people who can't yeah. accept uh hard truths and really like sit with it like for instance regardless of what your beliefs are and i don't want to get into the conversation of whether or not it's okay to kill animals for meat but if you do eat meat, you kill an animal for it. I'm about to. And exactly what Garrett's about to do. <laughs> so you cannot pretend that there is no loss of life or that there is no byproduct uh, to, to the fact that meat 
comes from a living being. Now we are getting to a point where there are things being made that are similar or give me that lab, meat. you know, imitation and give all this kind shit. of stuff. I want that shit that they grow like in a lab and it's just ribs of rat, you know, like uh, yeah, racks like of rib and like petri dishes with like brisket. fucking grafted, you know, whatever. If they can get that to a point where it's humane and they can replicate shit, great, fantastic, fine. For me, I do not need it to be true animal protein for it to be you know for me to eat it food is supposed to be sustenance and supposed to give you energy but to if, keep it, your day if going, it is right? but if if they can get like some genetically and that's a scary you know people are all about like don't modify the food or whatever but if you can literally produce the same atoms and cells and grow that shit like uh, in uh, you know without having to kill an animal if it's like biologically right. like molecularly the if same you can do it dude how That'd sick be awesome. would that be but right now they're working on shit like you that, gotta right? kill an animal to eat some meat and that's and that's kind of what i'm saying is that sometimes uh people don't realize that and i'm going to use a pun from the show trying to, to make an butterfly. omelet you got to break some eggs well yeah you know and so uh so you're gonna have to do some things people don't like in a show this really took liberties that I thought were appropriate for where the world is. They used the theme of Watchmen as that reflective mirror on society and did it again. Uh, Damon Lindelof, I think, knew exactly what he was writing when he wrote it and and made it very, uh, very specifically pointed. I mean, starting the episode, the first episode with the Tulsa race riot or uh, Black, Black Wall Street, I thought that was an exaggeration built in the world and that's one of the actual only factual things that happened and yeah, i'm like oh like okay no hold on with the planes flying in the air and the shooting in the air and the bombs going off no look it up planes flying in the air bombs blowing up buildings people being shot in the street yeah they took down that whole that fucking happened block. that fucking happened and then the rest of the show is built off of this idea again so poignant in this time especially because it, it dealt with this underlying issue of like justice and what motivates, uh, you know, what motivates a person to want to do good or bad. What is good or bad? You know, you look at somebody like Adrian Veidt, who, you know, in the in in Watchmen, the first one, he is considered evil, but he stops a nuclear holocaust. So, were his actions purely evil, right? or were they for the greater good? And so what do we do to the people, just like in this game, what do we do to those people who do something for the greater good, who sacrifice their name, themselves, and what they want? Listen to the snake. <laughs> for, the, for the greater <laughs> fucking good. And, and so this, this does that again. It does it in such a way that's so deeply rich and enjoyable and visually amazing while – while pushing some really fun boundaries, yeah. and, and I, I'm and really glad that that soundtrack is fucking banging. Oh, dude, so good! The, All three volumes are on great. Apple the Music. The is great. Uh, I think the only problem with the show is the pilot, actually, because I watched it when it premiered uh, mm. in last year, and I it just seemed like it was going to be like, uh, like you know, like Super with Rain Wilson or Kick Ass or something. It was like a, it was going to be like a cop procedural. But something mm. about the pilot really turned me off, and huh. I didn't come back to it until I heard you talking about it. You know what it is? It's the amount of violence in the first episode. Like, doesn't she immediately, like, uh -huh. start beating people's yeah. asses in the first episode and shit? Looks like death was if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah I, I like, I like I people talking about it. their ideas more than people, tons of people dying on screen, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I've seen enough of that. <laughs> right. And, and, and so, like, again, the, the whole, oh, oh, right, the first episode is where Judd and all that, and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, again, it's like, it, it's... Okay, so now we got rid of superheroes and we think police are on our side, oh, which clearly shit. they aren't. And, uh, and yeah, even at the head of the police, he has racism in his roots, even though he may not be racist. You know, like, all the shit that ends up happening in that setup in that one episode is fucking incredible. You know, like... Yeah, I'm, yeah it all comes together, but I don't know, watching it uh, and waiting a week, and I don't know, like it just couldn't, it couldn't pull me back, but uh, yeah. it all does pay off. It pays off very well. Well, what's hard is that when you when you don't know when the story's gonna end or where it's going, it's it yeah you're you're left kind of having to make up the difference yourself, and that's where that that's where I like a show. That's where I sit back and I'm like, well, I can't do anything until the next episode comes out, so I'm just gonna yeah. I marathoned that. I didn't wait 
weeks in between. Even you just that, kept you kept on me about like you should you should watch it you should watch it. I watched and I it. I finally did. I think I started at episode six or seven so that I didn't have to sit through the first six or seven weeks of waiting each week for that episode okay. to start because I don't have the commitment to care about it each week. There's something fun about that though, like a show that. Once you're into it, like you can binge it out the gate, and then it's like, oh, now I gotta wait for the new season every week. Yeah, there's something about that for me. I like to kind of do that, especially with a show like, um, you know, like Breaking Bad. Yeah. I started watching that at the end of the first part of the last season because they did that split into two thing, and uh, and yeah, I I enjoyed that. I was able to get some of the fun of watching it with people. But I got to watch it with people who were already fans of the show. Yeah. Because I hate this thing nowadays with people oh, where... Um, there's the sorrow. Where it's like, oh, is this even good? Like, people talking about Last of Us. Like, is it even worth checking out? It's like, absolutely fucking lootly it's worth checking out. Will you like it or not? That's Jesus a matter of Christ. preference. You sounded mad. Because right a game like Last of Us has been uh, like developed over seven years to do something interesting. Yeah. You know, and try something different. The Naughty Dog has always put out fun, but artistic and genre pushing games. Why wouldn't you want to at least check it out? Whether or not you like it, fine. But I think you're not going to get a bad game experience out of it like you would buying a new Madden game and being like, oh, it's just more Madden. That you should question buying every year. Not a fucking new AAA first person <laughs> single single player, you know, story. That's how I think, you yeah, know. Yeah, I I I think some people are just picky about like what games they buy. So they want to read a review ahead of time. I never look at a review personally. Mm -hmm. And I just will take a chance on a game that looks interesting enough. And then I know what I like, so I know, like, well, I'll get the next whatever Metal Gear, the next whatever Resident Evil, the next Final Fantasy. Yeah. Uh, I loved Last of Us. All my friends told me how good that first one was, and I loved it. So I knew I was going to get Last of Us 2. I don't buy a lot of games that I'm disappointed with anymore. I think the I've honed in my skills now. Yeah. On like, I know what I have time to play, and I know what I like. There's a lot of games I like, I just don't finish or i sometimes lose interest in like yeah i got enough out of it yeah um and that's the other thing like there you have to remember what a video game is trying to do but it, people yeah people asking for just to finish that thought though like oh, people yeah. asking for reviews i get it like because i used to do that all the time like i i wanted to know what people i uh, appreciated their opinion thought about it yeah but now i feel just like i have a sense for like i know i'm gonna like that yep so that's what developing your own taste is. You know, it's one thing to be aware, and I'm sure you can attest to this, uh, Muftiva, growing up in Hollywood especially. There's something to be, you know, in the now and being, a, 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 you know, aware of what's going on and all the newly available things. But not always do those things end up having substance. And a lot of times, those things that don't are typically a marketing ploy or some push to get you to feel a sense of urgency to buy something. A game mm. like The Last of Us, there's obviously no sense of urgency to get you to buy a shitty game. Obviously. How many times <laughs> did they delay it? So yeah. in that case, if you're questioning whether or not the game is going to be good, the game is going to be good. Yeah, yeah. Will I think you like, like what the game does? I would go as far as saying is all AAA games are good. Yeah. They're I mean, good. Maybe you don't like that genre of game. You you will never catch me playing an, uh, another Assassin's Creed. I will. But I bet. But I. But Trisha fucking, plays the fuck Trisha, out of my brother plays them. I know They're countless good people games. who play it. Some people like Trish love the ability to have a checkbox game, and they go down the list and they just check off yeah. all the boxes in the corner in, the, in, the, in oh, each shit. quadrant. Some people like me will just play I, but, uh, it until they get think... what they want out of it. Do you think those games are good, or do you think that those games just appeal to current taste and are are the most well funded, right? So that because I mean, that's... I, will they hold up? Like, are pe are people going to be going back to these games? Because no. there's plenty of genres that were popular in the past that have completely fallen by the wayside. Yeah, totally. No. Uh, so, uh, people mean, aren't going to be climbing towers in 10 years. I, I mean, people are going to always have an interest yes. in uh, specific things, so there will always be a market for for sh for anything. Anything, any yeah. song you've—I remember having this uh, thought very clearly and vividly at uh, at a show. Uh, it was some band that I knew was kind of popular, but I didn't know who they were. And they were playing, and people were cheering, and they were excited. And I went, "This 
is somebody's favorite band, and I don't know anything about it, uh -huh. and I actually don't like it. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not, or it's not <laughs> for me. Again, I don't like to use the words like I don't like it because it it, it makes it seem like but I have like... a thing against it. It isn't for me. It clearly yeah. doesn't communicate to me on what it does. And I and here's the thing about me that I think is different. I would love more than anything to be convinced why you like it. Not why it's good or why it should be claimed to be the best thing in the world, but if you Muff Diva like a specific band or game or streamer or whatever, I'm interested to know why. Just like when a game developer like Kojima or Naughty Dog puts out a single player narrative story, it's not about what I want in the game. That's what those open world games are for. That's what Assassin's Creed and Just Cause are created for. These yeah. are to see a story by by an artist, to get something told to you. So stop implying, same thing with Watchmen, same thing with Lost, same thing with any great any great piece of media. Stop implying what you want onto, their, onto that artist's work and try to infer what they're using to tell you. You know, like again, uh, what I, I, I typed this in the chat while we were while we were playing. I noticed without the bandana, the boss, her hairstyle is exactly like Ocelot in MGS5. Oh, you know so how funny. he has that kind of short haircut. That's uh, you know the, yeah. the front bangs are around his eyebrows and it kind of tapers off towards the back of his neck and it stays there. That's exactly what the boss's haircut's like. Never noticed that before today. So it's like there's always. Eric said this once a long time ago to, to somebody. When you see something on a screen, it should be there for a reason. If it's just there for no fucking reason, it's probably live TV. But if it's in a movie or a TV show, something serialized, it should be there for a reason. It should represent something. Oh, yeah, the boss took my gun. Yeah. I forgot. I'm, yeah. like, looking for the gun right now. And so that's that's what Metal Gear does with their games. That's what that's Yeah, what it's, there. It's, it's a great little clue, that stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think I think a movie or a show or you know a series like The Watchmen, there everything in that, especially oh, yeah, nine episodes, was has to be meticulously placed there for for specific reasons. And, yeah, and I, I really think, like I like layered works like that where there there's so much to revisit and and sort through and discuss. Yeah, yeah. It, that, I'd rather have that than a piece of mindless entertainment that never goes beyond just consuming it. You know, there's not even a reason to talk about it. I, I don't. Why even spend your time watching something like that? Yeah, and and I feel like we've had this conversation before, or I'm having like the the most specific fucking deja vu, <laughs> uh, or I dreamt this because uh, I remember I was I saw in the chat Last of Us isn't torture porn, and it was Killer DLS who wrote this the last time I remembered it. I it's not torture <laughs> porn. Some people are like not into that game for whatever reason it's I, like people make everything fucking political and even that game got like politicized well, yeah, be, in some weird because way. it's like oh why is it so gruesome i don't but, yeah hey, i mean hey. i've talked about that before too like when i played the tomb raider uh reboot i was like oh my god this poor girl so so that to me was a little bit i would say that's closer to, to torture porn than uh than what last but is it a double sta you know is it a double standard because you see leon's head fall off backwards in resident evil 4 and you're like yeah no but that's I, too much i think it too. depends on how even it's in, framed right even in dead space 3 for instance dead space 3 started to push it more into the torture porn and if you missed qtes and shit it would be like this gruesome like impaling yeah, of isaac's that. eye and i'm like what are we doing here so again in Last of Us, they made it to the point, just like they did in Red Dead 2, where like you see it, you feel it, and you go, "Oh, I didn't. I kind of wish I didn't do that." Hold on a second. Oh, I Let's... I fully like zoom the camera around for throat oh, slits. Oh, so do I else. because the detail is there for yeah, one. The so I want to appreciate Ellie the animation. Make... The faces Ellie <laughs> makes are like oh gruesome. I'd right, be, I'd be making that face. Right, like it's it's. It, you not only get to see the anger and the hate in her face that's driving her motivation throughout the whole game, so you get to feel her her, her emotion because we are receptive. We infer that as human beings. When we see somebody, we can read them. That's why some people make us feel calm. Others don't. And in, in this game, you're watching her facial, like motions get like angry and piss and, and yeah, you yeah. see the all of that animation and it's there and it's supported the characters that you that you face against you hear their names they're humanized you don't feel right about what you're doing at any fucking point and that's what that's what you're supposed to be doing it the game was that's not a mistake you're not supposed to be happy about it that it, like the fact that people are complaining about it in in the responses to them i guarantee you 
as developers and as game game developers are patting themselves on the back because they, they did it. Yeah, people said even before the game was released, uh, there were like reviews and stuff coming out about it. Like, eh, it's kind of a, it was weird. People were like, it's kind of like not like this joyous game. It's kind of a bummer. And it was like, it's not fun to play. No, it's like, no, it's really fun to play. Just the story is kind of a fucking heavy bummer. Yeah. Or in a way like that was worded and they were very dicey about uh, about describing it that way. But it, it does seem to have very serious fucking tones, which if you're not into that type of gameplay or storytelling, then... Mm. Why does every... I don't think every game needs to be entertaining, right? I mean, and I will say too, I do think all wow. entertainment also qualifies as art because it's creative expression, no matter what the, the motivations or yeah. money behind it is. It's still art. It's still all art. Bad art is still art, and it's not bad. It's just different, you know? Sh sh yeah, uh, and I wouldn't say... Than taste. It's all valid. I wouldn't say it's bad. Uh, I wouldn't even say it's bad art even. It's just not for you, you know? It's for someone. I'm sure the art... Even if it's for the artist and their mother, I'm sure they... Well, you know. I, I think the other thing is we need to recognize the definition of fun is subjective, not objective. Yeah, like I, I, Garrett and definitely. I, yeah. guys, guys, eighteen hundred hours in Metal Gear fucking five to get my FOBs to Some all people out. Were bored with that. Everybody else, in retrospect, I look back at that and I go, "What the fuck? Are you serious? You spent that much time doing this? <laughs> Whatever. You know why? Because I had a, I, I had." fun while I was doing it. Yeah. It created some sense of fire and ignited something that kept me engaged for 1800 hours. Rather than being upset that I spent 1800 hours that I can't get back now, I should appreciate the fact that the game kept me engaged for 1800 hours. But is it good? Should I play it? For me, to me, <laughs> you should yeah, you should fucking play it. To me, uh -huh. I'm like I got 1800 hours out of it. I got more than like the next 10 people I'll talk to out of this game. I'm 95% hidden. You think this is fucking this yeah, is my he downfall. He, he won't see you unless he But what if he comes this way? But then you get up his, and you see you see him. I don't know his rat. Oh fuck. Can I, can I also say I just did, uh yeah, you know, I don't think right. every game needs to be fun because uh well, you know, fun. I mean life isn't fun. So not not you can't express every thought, you know, or every yeah. idea worth expressing and only have the way that you interact with that story be in a fun way because yeah. it's just too, it's too limiting. I think it's too narrow of a scope for all of interactive, you know, media. Well, and that's fun. what, that's what I think game is shorthand for at this point, right? It's everything from, for, you know, visual novel to, you know, 2000 hour grind fest, whatever that may be. Those are all games. Yeah. And fun's a hard uh a word because like yeah the game could be fun like like uh you just said that drive fest game and that reminded me of like uh desert bus or something like that like it's fun if you get a bunch of friends together and you have a big party and they stream like desert bus you yeah. know like it it could make that game fun but just games aren't for everyone that's why there's all these different types and uh last of us 2 you can't deny it's not a good game. It's a fucking. I mean, geez, they talk. There's controversy about working the fucking poor developers to the bone. Right. Uh, uh, on this game, it better be fucking good. The game itself, it like the but, mechanic. Is, go ahead, but hold on, fun is just uh, a weird word because like uh, it, any. It just depends on the person playing. Like you said, Muff Diver. Like uh, this is a fun game for me, but man, I don't think I would want to play Demon Souls. I don't think that I don't think I would be having fun playing no. that, but other people would have so much fun. Yeah. And maybe Last of Us Two is like, hey man, this theme is too heavy and too fucking like a movie, and I don't want that right now. And then that's not for you. But I would say it's a bad game. You can't deny that. It's a great game. Um, it, I just it, think it, if there are movies and and works of you know on television and books that are not necessarily fun, we can talk about great works that are tragedies that are. Yeah. Uh, you know oh, things God. where characters get put through the ringer, and we're Some not saying like it's movies. fun to watch. It's it's a it's an emotional experience. It can it can put you through Some grief of... and and all these things, and it's not fun. But we still consider these to be great works of yeah. art. Why can't that apply to certain games? I, no, exactly. I think that some of my favorite films are films that I can't watch on the regular because I got to be in a certain mood yeah. to throw on like Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> or like, yeah. uh, hey, d you know, there will be blood. There will be blood. Yeah, it's, my, it's one of my favorite movies. Apocalypse when I, Now, Redux. When, when I commit to watching it, 
boy, is it one of the funnest experiences, and it's gripping and whatever. Hey, one of the one of my favorite movies ever, and, I, and Eric and I talk about this all the time. One of my favorite movies that I ever watched in the theaters uh, because it surprised me so much was Punch Drunk Love, and it oh, is yeah. such a white knuckle stress fest that I cannot watch it again. That's funny. It's Adam Sandler too. Yeah, because Adam Sandler portrays that that fucking pent up, beat down like. You know, just guy who's trying to get by and be nice and be whatever, it, like, so well that you feel it and you hate it. And that's the point. The point is when you can feel the emotion, when you're now made uncomfortable, when you're pushed out of that Some boundary. Some people don't like it, dude. I get it. Hey, man, I don't like roller coasters that drop only because, to me, where's the story? What's the fun in that? We dropped. Great. You got the rise out of me. It's a cheap <laughs> pop. I don't like the yeah, feeling the, of I'm the almost entire point die of creative expression high. is to tell the story. The part exactly. It's com- what are you communicating to me? That's why I love going to Disneyland. That's why I love games that have a story. That's why I love games that have lore. Again, there's nothing wrong to be said about like, hey dude, that's why I love Metroid games or Castlevania games. Less story, all about gameplay and exploration. Same thing with Nintendo. But games. it also puts you in the position of of, you know, who the avatar in the game or or the story, whatever, like when you're on a Disneyland ride, you are Snow White. Like you're going through the shit. You are you I'm are in the situation right that's harrowing. I'm yes, you I'm know. Big boss. And once you can feel the same uh, sort of feelings of that character, and you and you've sort of lost the, you know, once that line is blurred, I would say that's a special <laughs> piece of art because you're being engaged by the artist at that yeah. point. Yeah, and and it's kind of funny because like they're. There are interesting points to look at that. Like Louie M in the chat just now said, as animated as Wes Anderson movies are, the Royal Tenenbaums was so depressing to me, it took me forever to rewatch it. I can't tell you how many times I've endlessly rewatched the Royal Tenenbaums and Life Aquatic, which I think is on the same sort of tone. So if you haven't, I'm sure you have Louie M if you're talking about Royal Tenenbaums. But if you haven't checked out Life Aquatic, that's another one that, like, those are my two perfect movies by, by Anderson. But they're so... It's, it's this find the joy, find the flower in the shit. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? That's what Last of Us really is about. The, it, again, you're post-apocalyptic America after this huge fucking tragedy. And what do you remember? The giraffe from The Last of Us 1. You remember the beautiful <laughs> moments. You, don't, you do remember the horrible things, but then when you saw the beautiful moments, those gave you... That sense of warmth, that connection you felt with the characters, and that's that's what art is. Art is when you transfer an emotion by using media, and that yeah. and that is the difference between that and a commercial. Commercials use what art has established to communicate something to you for you to have a sense of urgency or a perceived need for something, but that that but is that's there's there's a mixing now. People yeah. make deals with the devil to get their art. Yeah, out there, well, that's and how it's always been. and you got to mix it with, uh, you know, the commercial side of things. Yeah, look at Ava's hair with the long. And long. the independent artists never stop making stuff. Exactly, like yeah. we're always here. That's like, what that's what I love about making my own stuff is my, you don't have to compromise. Yeah, and I would much but, rather do that honestly than I would big. too. We've done stuff where we've had to compromise, and, you know, but it, like everything that you guys are saying about like the Watchmen show. Or, R1, R1. Or, 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 oh yeah, baby! You get to see what fed <laughs> solid and liquid. I, I cannot. Sorry, guys. I do, I do appreciate Sorry. Ravencliff told us. I do appreciate Is there anyone jacking off to this right now? What fed Thank solid you. and liquid? Uh, <laughs> no, I was just going to say, like, every, everything you're saying about, you know, the Watchmen show and Last of Us as this game, these huge, dramatic storytelling things. It can be applied to music as well. It's like there's so many yeah. genres. What's the most like down and depressed and like bummer music genre out there? Goth, and that's mainly what I listen to. But uh, you're like the most that's, nice person I know. Th- that's that's just the flavor that I like, you know. And and there's other shit out there for my mom, you know. And country music exists for her, her and uh, you know. Yeah, it's. It, hey, it, it can it can coexist, man. Yeah, I, I think not every. But why is there so much shit on The Last of Us too? Like, there's this. I feel like a real push where like people are shitting on that game. I think a lot of it. I'm not is, fucking playing. A lot of a lot of it is that people. Again, it's like. It's like uh, it, 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 people like to 
Is everyone naturally... stuck inside and they're just like, I, I've got to get my opinion. No, I think I think part of it is my negative it, opinion is that any any advertising is good advertising. So we're talking about it on our stream. So people are gonna be naturally sitting there, whoever's listening right now, and thinking, well, okay, I've heard what Brian and Garrett have to say. I do trust their opinion. I don't know if I would still want to spend sixty bucks on this game, but they did kind of say some things that oh, yeah. actually interest me now. So now I feel intrigued to go out and maybe try The Last of Us, whereas before they might not. And that's the tertiary mer marketing that they're hoping for from their initial marketing. You and I know 100% day one, downloaded that game three days before it was ready, yeah. had, it looked at the clock every fucking day because I knew when it was coming. Other I, people on the fence. I know there's a certain population out there posting uh, shit about the game that just don't like the 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 sexual orientations or the thematic elements yeah, that don't agree something? or don't align with their views. Sure, yeah, go, go ahead. So you got you got that entering into the conversation too where it's like I love the diversity in this game by the way. I think Dude, I, I think can't stop there's looking at plenty of people bicep. who are <laughs> I think I think there's plenty of people who can have, you know, whatever feeling they want about the le the thing that was leaked and and how whether they oh, played see, the game I'm or not, so how do they I feel about know. that? I didn't know about that. I have a feeling yeah. about what it is, but I still don't know because I still haven't finished the game. So, I'll, I'll, I'll love for every... learning about that as it's uh, in my fucking review. Yeah. Rear view. Take take that again. Rear view. Yes. Rear view. I'm yeah. For, but I think for every there's a plenty of people like that. But there's I'm just gonna say there's a lot of people who, who, <laughs> yeah. Someone in chat pointed out just. A lot of people get mad anytime there's anything to do with trans people in games, especially, but any kind of media, they're afraid of yep. other people who just yeah. are, are existing. And by the way, we're fucking scared too. We don't want anything to do with it. We don't want to be around they. We're afraid of it too. You yeah. know? And uh, so there's a lot of people who get upset when any of that stuff comes close to any of it. They get mad. Whether, even if it's, if it's a, a writer on the staff of a game as transgender, it's going to be a problem for them. And they will try and obfuscate it. They'll try and misconstrue it. Yeah. But it's just like it's just like anything else. Any marginalized group, they, they see through that shit. They recognize it. And when people tell you this is what's happening, this is the kind of discrimination we're facing, and it persists in a way that manifests in violence in real life in the real world because people hold these beliefs that they're more comfortable expressing on the internet. You know, yeah. uh, it's you have to listen to it from whoever it's coming from because. We're everyone's never gonna. Got a, everyone's got an opinion now, man. Yes. They got a. They got a. But we all have to voice. listen to each other with trust and understanding and, and love because we're if we don't open our hearts and try to understand mm -hmm. each other better, we're never gonna break the cycle of violence. I I True absolutely that. agree with you, Muppdiva. And one thing that I want to bring up about this whole thing is is a is a big thing that I think Naughty Dog does. Um, very, very, uh, very I, I, proficient. I don't know. I'm not, I guess I'm not there yet in the game because I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> oh, no, just, again, the fact... I mean, you, you, you've you already met Abby. It, it's just she is a different-looking female character. Yeah, I mean, people... She doesn't look like shit. this. She doesn't look like I Ava. Just... She doesn't have the hourglass figure. She, has, yeah. she is muscular because... Uh, hey, when you first play as her, she does not look as... Uh, like, like as she does. Like when I first saw her, I'm like, she looks different than. Well, let's than, not spoil anything that's what I mean, in the game. But I mean, just I'm like not, Ellie. I'm not. I'm not that far in. So. And, and that's and that's let's, why. Let's just. I'll, I'll stay it. away from. I'll stay away from that. Okay. But so look, let's relate it to like. Um, I, I'm I'm trying to think like. There's I think there's people out there. Mm -hmm. Who just like they? That's what I was gonna say. They bitched so much about Air, uh, Tifa's boobs in the Final Fantasy VII remake mm -hmm. announcement. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You're changing our favorite character, and and uh, it wasn't enough for some, or it's too much for some others. I, I think like everyone just having their fucking opinion yeah. about what's <laughs> wrong is so. It's just new. We never had this before. Yep. And like that's funny though because I I know women with large breasts who play that game and love that character and they were yeah. like I'm glad that her boobs were big just like the original. Nice. But they there's nailed also it. so they all thought it was fine. There's there, I mean but that's a that's that's a anecdotal evidence. Mm -hmm. You know there's also yeah. other opinions and like everyone's everyone's, everyone's just throwing that shit out online nowadays and it's like negative stuff is what gets likes and gets looks and everything is like. Mm -hmm. 
fucking spinning out of control when you're so into your hobby when you're so i try to look at games seriously as i always call them toys yeah. it's like when i was a kid and i picked a game it was by the fucking cover looked cool and yeah. let, let me get this home i didn't know the names of the fucking developers i didn't know the names of the graphic designers or the lead character uh animators or no i didn't know i started playing metal gear on the nes i didn't know who the fuck hideo kojima even was yeah yeah, I, 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 and that wasn't even his game. Or uh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> according first, according to him later, right? But like, uh, I didn't, I wasn't so in the weeds in that. Now you know, working in this industry, you start to key into the stuff, and uh, I, I honestly think I can get a little too close to it because I still try to just play a game that looks good. Me too. And I don't spend time getting my negativity i don't give any energy into something that i don't like yeah well again it's like the the, the biggest issue is that the people who complain that they're doing what kojima talks about in metal gear 2 which is and, and what the game is trying to get you to do it's relate to the characters but in metal gear 2 it's you're relating to the characters but it doesn't matter if you're playing raiden or snake you're the one making these decisions and that was the first sort of exploration into that uh probably not the first but one of the first that we can remember of meta existential the video game is an extension of you yada yada yeah this game is now a post postmodern uh or neo postmodern fucking thing so it's sincere Whoa. and it's a hundred percent sincere i don't even know what that means it's too post so yeah like it, it, it's i don't know what to call it too but postal it, and, it, for and me. then it sounds fucking pretentious when i start adding dumb shit like that but the idea is it's sincere it's not trying to be snarky it's not Saints Row is a great example of 100% satire yeah. on uh, max volume 11. GTA you know, even, you know. GTA back then. GTA now? Now that's more sincere. It's more, like, grounded, real life. It feels like a simulation. True, but it is the, like, extreme. Yes. It's a satire yeah. in yeah. that it pushes to the point. Although, looking at it now, <laughs> it's like, wait, everybody's got mental issues going to see their therapist. They're on their pills. Their wife's not happy. Their kids fucking hate them. Yeah. Shit, this is real life. And it, and yeah. that is exactly what it whoa, whoa what it ties back to, <laughs> and and again with, with the Last of Us thing, it's that people have this association to the first game, and you play this one character, in the second game, it's a whole new experience. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. And that's then, all he's saying. And then Naughty Dog again, is a very very inclusive company, which is absolutely incredible they have multinational people they have people of different genders and different uh statuses whatever they want to be called. why are they getting in trouble they're getting called on the carpet for because working them too hard or what ultimately video games like you said started out as a toy and there are some people who don't see how it could be more than just a toy more than just fun games that are 100 percent blah 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 bubble gum chew it doesn't matter sometimes it should be just a toy though. sometimes it should be if yeah you're too, if you're too close to it and you can't enjoy it because of you don't like the exactly. opinions of someone who made it exactly then i don't know are, are you missing out on the good things in life because you <laughs> you're fucking thinking about it too hard yeah or hey do well you it's also it? it's possible to in enjoy and engage with works of art and and even love them and still recognize their flaws and recognize the oh, the yeah. biases of the people who made them because if you're critically thinking you you can still take the good and and not leave the bad but recognize you know what sure. uh might be problematic or this or that with it you know i, I think it's completely possible that's not the same as separating the art from the artist because i don't think that's possible because yeah. if you separate the art from the you artist can. then who fucking made it I think a great example of of, of a of a game or series that has done that very well is Yakuza. They can be goofy and silly and a little bit raunchy, but they can always dial it back to being silly and wholesome. You'll have a character go into a uh, into a room for a photography mission where it's just photographing women that are models in bikinis, and it's Ooh, not la, la. actual. It's not uh, it's not a fucking CG. Shotguns? character it's real video of Flash this bangs? real actress wow. that you can look up on instagram so you know that she got paid for this role and she's benefiting from the position and then in the game, i don't i don't even think about that well hey if you it's, a, it's <laughs> if you do if you want to think about it you know that in the very least this woman is a professional model who's getting paid for the services that she does professionally so that is a that is what? an admirable trait then in the mission no, they talk here. about why it's good to be wholesome and try to work hard regardless of what your career path is and is trying to be open to different styles of people 
Wow. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that fucking great? You know, to have a game yeah, where it's a like positive little message there. Yeah, it's fun. Now, I think and it's cute. You can, yeah. And I like I love those games and you can appreciate that and take away that value and still also be critically thinking, okay, but how does this glorify or or give credence to actual yakuza? Like how does this make people uh, react to them in real life, you know, yeah. skew skew the perception because of its cult colorful depiction with the I fictional mean, characters that you grow to love. You I can mean, still yeah. like those games and still be critical at the same time. It's completely possible. Absolutely, and, and even in the game, it's critical of itself. The main character does not want to be part of Yakuza. He gets himself out because he doesn't believe that it's an honorable way. And then the rest of the series, he's not even in the Yakuza. He's just dealing with the Yakuza lifestyle. So you can have that Ooh. association to it yeah. without giving it that 100% condoning. Again, going back to my topic of Things in life can just be the, the, the matter what? of fact, they <laughs> exist. We don't need to ingrandize or, or promote or, or need to necessarily be saying that we're ingrandizing or promoting uh, the Yakuza by having them in a movie or a game. But rather, yeah. we're representing an aspect of the world that exists in an artistic way to help you understand something. Whatever that is, is going to change based on the piece of art, and that's what makes art so incredible. But yeah, that that is the thing I think people forget. They see media and they forget that part of it isn't is is largely based on the fact that it is 100% a construct, 100% intended to make you, you feel a certain way. You uh, you're gonna see me die here in a sec. <laughs> oh my god! But, you guys have to fucking slow down a sec because it's getting too uh, <laughs> much for me to follow. I mean, no we, we've gone from fucking. Racist police in the world today on an HBO show to The Last of Us and why people might hate it and dislike it to having a cognitive function that lets you see the good in media even if it's portraying bad things. I'm losing my absolute fucking mind here. <laughs> I, and, I, and I can't even figure out how to aim a gun. So I, I really... Uh, if I'm, you think that's hard, try aiming on the 3DS version. Oh, fuck me, okay. I don't even have the Guys, fucking Circle I'm, Pad Pro. I'm so woke, I'm awake beyond belief. But let's take a quick commercial <laughs> break. Let me try to regain my consciousness. Thank you, Muff Diva. Thank you, Muff Diver. Yeah, thanks for chatting. Thank Peace you. Out. Thanks. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>
back. I gotta hit the uh, hit the continue here. Oh. Get another chance, Brian. I didn't even know what way was up. I think it's down to the. Oh, I gotta hide again and do the whole. You oops, gotta eliminate oops, all oops. eight of these enemies. Yeah, and ah oh, man, I want to do it. I always dive through the window and climbed upstairs first. I want to sneak and do it because I got the silencer, so I can do some headshot kills from like behind trees and shit. But I gotta wait through them blowing the door up now and this whole thing. All right. Uh, while we're waiting again, mm -hmm. uh, let's take a quick call. All right. Love Diver was on for quite a while. Uh, hey, that, when you get into well, the, yeah, it was very interesting conversation. The I do's and don'ts it. and the nitty gritty of uh, of artistic discussions. You, you're yeah, gonna, you're gonna get a, a nice little debate. I love that kind of well, shit. Well, it wasn't even a, a debate. I, yeah, I you're think, right. A conversation. You know, it was kind of oh, like uh, 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 just relating it. Yes. You know, walking through a nice little. A nice little journey down a path together. We're going to talk to... Uh, Deep dive in media. Oh, I hate that term. <laughs> See, I don't think about it that hard, though, sometimes. Deep dive. I just know what I like. Yeah, I know. It's per it, it, I, I get caught up on shit like that because I'm like, it's such I don't a... want to... Being close to it can ruin it for you sometimes. Yeah, yeah it can. It can. What? Even making videos, you see through the the stuff sometimes, and you're like, ah, oh, I can see yeah. that. Uh, dude, it, it's totally true. Hello. Egg, you got... You got Hey. Our ears. Hey. What can we do for you, you tonight? You've got my ears, yeah. Egg. Um, I just wanted to say, can we spin that wheel? Oh, oh, a second. We did one already, but I'm feeling saucy. You know, let's let's do a second. Let's do a second fucking we do, wheel. Every spin. so often, we throw it out, especially because it's not asked on yeah. every episode. Yeah, we didn't. I was I was pumping hard for it last dude, week, I'm dude. I'm always pumping hard. And uh, yeah, oh, right. I saw that. Uh, and no one called and said it, but I do get a little, you know, we distract you, and it's like a whole psychological operation. Once you call in, I start I talking about, about other shit. If you don't get right to it, then I go like, all right, anything else? And you're like, oh, I forgot, fuck, and we hang up. It's a whole trick we play. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's how I would but get... But you uh, saw through it, Egg. Yeah, dude, that, 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 that's all how right, I used to end um, arguments with ex-girlfriends. Oh, my God. That's a good... You just you, you keep you, what I did to you right right in the last episode or right in that yeah. last call where you were like what are you even talking about? I just uh, you just keep talking and it makes and, uh, and, and then you, put, you guys put me in a fucking trance. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're still listening and it all makes sense, but yeah. you realize that you have no idea what they're talking about anymore, and then you're just out. It's not a good way to go. <laughs> I don't I'm like gonna, doing it. I'm gonna spin that wheel for you, Egg. Are you ready? Wait, I'm ready. Tell me, are you ready? Yes, Let's get that hype. I am ready. Let's do it. Yeah. Here it comes. Show feet. Show feet. Show feet. Show feet. Show feet. No. 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 We've got uh, karaoke. Of karaoke. I'm going to lower yeah, the voice it. here for you. For, let's do a little... Let's do a, a down low tone karaoke. No, okay. we, won't, we won't do that. Uh... <laughs> Although I do have a, a stunning baritone, oh. do you um, do you have a uh, well, last time you know it didn't work out too well when we took suggestions. You guys have to know the song, right? Yeah, yeah we have to know the song, issue. so that didn't work. So maybe I will uh go through and find something, and then uh, if you stick around, egg, we'll get to that karaoke session. See, now good. I was gonna take a quick call while we were still hiding in the locker, but we were committed to now another. Another uh, well, since you're picking spin. the song, he can he can hear it on off air. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Thanks. so much, Egg. Thanks, I'm gonna Egg. I'm gonna figure something out right now. No worries. Thank you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you, Egg. With a karaoke wheel spin, we're gonna do one. Love it. I was thinking, uh, what the other? I was singing something the other day that I really liked. Sometimes I go back into my um, my playlist on uh, my phone, and yeah. I just I go look at the backlog. Hit oh back, yeah, hit back a yeah, bunch. Yeah, that's a good idea. Go to that history. <clears throat> yeah, try to get some ideas there. Uh, it's always smart. It's hard to find though. Sometimes the history, like I don't think I. You can have find to go to right like. Now. You have to go to like the. Oh here. Art, and then you go to browse. And I'm I'm there. I'm bullshit. there. It's so, so fucking dumb. Mm, what was I? I was listening to uh, some Motorhead the other day. Oh. I watched I watched the Lemmy documentary. This is perfect. I watched on YouTube the 2010 Lemmy documentary, mm -hmm. the one that gets fucking wild with his collection. 
oh. of Nazi and World War II oh, memorabilia. Dude, that one's really cool, yeah. It's just hard because there is a part of a swastika in every shot oh, of yeah. every scene in his apartment. So what? Oh my well, God. So what, Lemmy? It's, uh, see, you're scaring people. But scaring. It, no, it, it's fully, you know, it's explained within the documentary. Lemmy's not a bad guy, guys. No. Uh, but by today's standards, you know, you get canceled for anything. So, um, in in honor of Lemmy, I was listening with, uh, Riding with the Driver. Mm -hmm. It Ain't My Crime. But it's interesting. In that documentary, they ask so many of those musicians, uh, what their favorite song is. And I, m immediately, mine always comes to mind is, is Killed by Death. Okay. Uh,. What's that off of? That's off of... God, what is that off of? I know I have it, though. Uh, so that's how I know we could do it. But see, just see, what's the what's the karaoke uh, landscape look like on YouTube? See if there is a, a, a true... Now, don't hit any of them, because it'll start no, auto-playing. Yeah. You gotta go by looks here. And what we're looking for isn't music video. You're looking for lyrics, but maybe... The like songfly type logo, like you really want to make sure this uh, is MIDI. Okay. Maybe MIDI. I don't need lyrics. Fuck, dude. I say that now. So what? Make them up. That's what I do, and I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's another type of uh, wheel spin we have. That's another game. I think I added a new one on there called. Um, where is it? It's called. <sighs> where is it? Shuffle songs. Ah, that's a new one where we do something similar with the with my iPhone and my playlist. Killed by <sighs> death, maybe. Mm -hmm. Not not much. We'll go on the Motorhead front. What's the Motorhead? Yeah, let's karaoke see. like. Look for Motorhead karaoke and pick us like a song fly type background, like a real good one. Okay, that we know isn't gonna flag. Oh, it'll it probably it looks still like flag this us. one. It's always gonna. It's funny because it's always gonna be. Um, it's always going to be Ace of Spades. That's gonna be the most popular one. I see a lot of that, but I don't. Want, we don't. But do this that. isn't even the song. It says. <laughs> it says artist Bob Marley and, and Mo Motorhead. Is he on that song? No, this is some mashup. Some thing. mashup. Okay. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. God was never on your side. Let me like a reptile. Just try that yeah, one. Yeah, let's just see. Joku random. I wish I had my uh, SM57 hooked up, but it's on yeah. the DJ set back there. Let's oh. do. It's good enough. This, uh. Oh. This will just have to get muted in the upload, that's all good. Sure, I can do it one point. I can change the speed. Slow down a little. Okay, I'll slow my voice down a little too. Okay. If you squeeze by lizard, I put a spell on you. I'm a romantic adventure. And I'm a reptile too. But it don't make no difference Cause I ain't gonna be Yeah. <laughs> 
Ocelot Squad keeps coming into the room. <coughs> I hurt my throat. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Whenever you sing like Lemmy, that's how you get a scratchy voice your whole life. And I don't need to do that because I'm pitch shifting it anyway. And then I keep remembering, like, no, 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 no. Don't deepen your voice because then it's double the deepen. Just talk regular. That's like with the tw so much shit with the pitch shifter thing. Yeah. Like, I... I don't talk regular, and that's what you should do. Oh. Let the pitch shifting do the work. I start to talk up, or I start to talk lower, when I, depending on how yeah. I'm... You know what I mean? That's Sucks. hilarious. So your fucking mind is a... Is a don't work right sometimes. Kill by death. Okay. I'm gonna, I haven't uh, heard that song. You get the point. I, they played it when I saw him, and I was, like, so ecstatic. Badass. He had some girl on who was the opener. Uh, she was the lead singer for the opening act, and she came out and sang it with him. It was cool. That's fucking Ooh. sick. What she looked like, um, you know, like all those girls in that band Millionaires? Yeah. Yeah. I am so scene fucking chick. happy. Sean loves them, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. She looked like this, like, uh, scene chick, all teased oh, up hair and everything. Oh, it's a single. <clears throat> well, it wasn't on the... Yeah, I must have it. I just have it on iTunes. Oh, I, I, I just phone. looked up the single. Sorry, my bad. Mm. Or Motorhead. Okay, hold on. I'm so afraid of these enemies. Oh, yeah, I forgot you have the lean. Oh, fuck. I don't want to waste the goddamn shots with the suppressor. That's what happened last time. I wasted all my shots like an huh. asshole. <clears throat> Let me get the motion detector out. Yeah, this is off of no Where album. This is, uh... uh -oh. This was just a single release with the B-side under the knife, and then it was on the No Remorse oh, oh. album, which is a compilation album. Really? Yeah, and then it was featured on live albums, No Sleep at All. Wow. I, I've never, ever heard that song before. That's oh, my favorite song, man. How the, crazy? You haven't heard that? I mean, dude, there's... There's so many. There's dude. so many. Cause, there's like 24 uh, albums or something. Dude, going back going back to what it's like to have uh, bye -bye. an actual artist working on something, <laughs> Lemmy was a artist who was always going to make music. Doesn't matter what, doesn't That's matter what. That's all he knows when. how to do. He probably has millions of songs we've never ever heard. And yeah, let's he see wrote two, a ton of fucking hits for other people. He wrote Ozzy's Mama, I'm Coming Home. Yeah. 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 And he I wrote that about how Ozzy feels when he comes back to Sharon from being on the road. Dude, that's he, insane. He wrote like songs for Madonna. He wrote so many songs: 22 studio albums, 13 live albums, 14 compilations, like five single or five EPs, 29 singles. So it's like these and guys really, were always going to be putting out music. No one walked it like they talked it as much. Mm -hmm. well, that documentary, that 2010 documentary, it's on YouTube. The whole thing. What's it called? I don't know, his son's in it a lot, which is cool because I didn't know he was in there. And there's some, like, kind of touching moments in that, too. And, and Is it just called Lemmy? Yeah. yeah that, there's like, it, But there's, really like, three one. of them. But it's called Lemmy 2010 documentary. Yeah. That, a, I saw that one. It's, the it's the really thumbnail cool. is weird because it looks like some, like, Hawaiian uh, totem pole art. But yeah. that's the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, it's some leather work of some. But there's, thing. like, two other ones, too, so I don't know. Maybe they're good as well. It's the Motorhead skull on leather. Ah, it's probably his bootmate. They interview yep. like a personal leathersmith. Not per I mean, he he was the best in the business, so Lemmy went to him for his boots and shit. Yeah, dude. Lemmy was the shit. So like what what the coolest thing about Lemmy He liked what he liked and he liked World War Two aesthetic. Man. He loved World War Two, he loved the, the, and the impact shit. it had on, on the world historically. Like what people don't realize about Lemmy was how intelligent he was. Like intelligent in the sense that he wasn't like a he wasn't a moron. He was very well read and, and very smart. He talked about, like, very progressive ideas all the way back then. You know, it, like, the the character is one thing. The man, a whole nother. And, like, Lemmy was a very intelligent man. And all of his music 
is is very smart, his lyrics, very cool. <clears throat> his lyrics are yeah, well well written lyrics. Mm-hmm. That's that's why that's the kind of legacy you want to have as a rock and roll artist. The guy who, who yeah, they did get pretty big, but they're not ACDC. They're not Iron Maiden, but they got fucking big. Well, his right? whole career, his whole career is so insane before Motorhead, Hawkwind, and everything else that he was like doing. Right, advancing as a the rock and Vickers, like yeah, all, all of the, like there wasn't again in no point, at no point in his life were you ever going to tell him that he wasn't going to be playing rock and roll. Yeah, it didn't matter if you agreed, he was playing rock and roll, and that's what I love about Lemmy, and that's why people love him. You're respected for the things that you do, and he played rock and roll, and he didn't care about anything else. <laughs> He didn't want to put on an image. He didn't want to be this. He wanted to push himself to do awesome music and express himself. And that's what he fucking did with his career. And that's why everybody loved it. Because it was never disingenuous. It was always real. And it was a, it was 100% him. Yeah, there's something that... Uh, I think Dave Grohl says it in that documentary. There's something about... Uh, all these artists look up to him because he really like lived that example of... Uh, you know, not taking any bullshit, doing only what you want to do. Yeah. And he did. He wanted to fucking drink at the Rainbow Room, do meth, uh, play his <laughs> gambling machine, trivia machine, That's it, dude. and tour playing rock and roll music to the fucking wheels fell off. Yep. And he really did. Yep. Is there anything wrong with that? Can anybody, <laughs> Absolutely not, Can man. anybody in this world no, look at him and say that you he watch, had a bad life? You watch that documentary and you're like, holy shit like the most fulfilled probably fun last of the rock and roll like real real rock and rollers to fucking do it because like you can't do it anymore it's not you you can't (laughs) i mean you can try you can come close rock is pretty fucking dead well the and how wild people fucking lived is pretty fucking dead dude Honestly, uh, some that Florida's showing us. Dude, that's the thing. Like, what I'm finding out is that it's not. It's just like we used to look at it as this cool, carefree thing, but now we gotten fucking like, you know, gentrified. It's like, oh, doing that kind of stuff is dangerous, and it actually, to its credit, to be young again though, you don't think that way. Exactly. It and to 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 everything's credit, we live in a safer world. We live longer. We have more access to you know things that we need to keep us healthy and less access less things that are um you know just going to harm us being out there so it's not perfect nothing ever is but you know we can have controlled fun we can ha- we don't need to go balls to the walls I crazy want, i i want my rock stars breaking everything in hotel rooms and uh going under the stage with groupies during drum solos I, oh, I, sh- I miss that what, the 80s I think was like must have just been fucking insane honestly I think a lot of that to is to be around at the height of rock debauchery uh, yes and, and, and the, the thing about that now is I think it still happens but now it's a lot less of this like weird like sleazy thing you know, like with everything that's happening now. Yeah, with, yeah, true. Uh, <clears throat> a lot Me of that Too stuff. and all of that kind of stuff. It's it's more of a you know. Yeah, it's a different time. That's that, that's another whole thing. Yeah, it's a different time now. So mm-hmm. like you can't you can't have that ever again. You can't you you as the artist can't be the can't be doing that kind of stuff, putting that stuff out there, being being known to be the guy who's trying to like grab girls from the audience and bring them up because of the you know fucking the whole the not whole so Drake much that thing but i mean there's years very, ago. there's huge willing participants in yeah. in rock oh, yeah. culture yeah. And, and music's history there is like always been that thing yes uh, and, and there always will be there still will be yeah hang, hangers on like our good friend muff diva and, yeah. and groupies that, that that's a part of the, the thing fucking, i see that scope up there you see that guy yeah a little glint of a slope of the scope, but yeah, I mean, again, I don't think rock and roll is dead. I think things just shift. I think rock and roll we got to a, a point while. where it was oversaturated. The music industry, let's call it, where being able to pick up your own instruments and gain, gaining your own following, it you know, it's a lot more complicated than that. Just like there's stuff out there. When I say rock is dead, it's like mainstream shits out there. Like MTV's dead. Like that kind of mainstream radio play rock. New new music is there's indie shit you can find out there. 
Yeah, and and that's what I mean. Like now, it's, and it's good. There's yeah, good now shit it's still being made. Now it's more of a personal journey for yourself to find things that How you like you, more. Oh, there it goes. Um, and that's and that's exactly it, Gary. You you hit you hit exactly that process on the head. Don't look to the mainstream people showing you a product to buy. Because the chances are they just want you to buy the product. They do not care about the substance. Well, yeah. Look at all those people who loved pop music when they were a kid. Oh, we loved Britney Spears' album. We loved the NSYNC albums. The people who made those albums, the five people in the bands that were in NSYNC, do not give a fuck about the songs they that were written and that they sang during those times. No, that shit's all manufactured. Exactly. But, but they're, it's like being in the Matrix, dude. I mean, ignorance is bliss. Right. Like when you're fucking 13... Yeah. And the bop comes on, and you're like, oh, my God, back streets, back, all right. It's still a banger. You're like, what the fuck? How did they do this? You know, like, uh, but it's interesting. It will come back around, you know, maybe. It may. It might. <sighs> Dude, I mean, it always happens, right? Because we had Backstreet Boys coming up, and, and this is how it happens. It, it doesn't it, uh, doesn't repeat itself. It, it, it rhymes. You had Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, and then 15, 20 years later, however long it took, you had One Direction and Next and whatever all those bands were. Even back in the then. disco era, there were boy bands. Yeah, ABBA. You had all of. I mean, ABBA was a mixed uh, group, which is a total, pop, total pop thing music. That we had thing. Yep. It was always kind of manufactured. Uh, dude, Killer DLS. They've gone. They've come back. They've gone. They've come back. They've gone. They've come back. They never go away entirely. Boy bands are always going to be there. T- there you go. TK Fox goes said it perfectly. Boy bands are now K-pop. K-pop yes. oh, has yeah. the I, lock on boy bands. I saw that. Uh, I I made that correlation the other day. I was just thinking about that. I was like, yeah, that's the evolution of NSYNC and shit. It's just the fucking Koreans holding down the market on it. Yep. And they've been doing it's that same for shit. years. It's the dancing. Oh, I remember when we first started years. going to get like boba tea. Oh, yeah. Remember back in the day? And it was like the tapioca express would have k-pop it was yeah. like we didn't call it k-pop we just called it oh korean music videos are on yeah and we would go watch all these korean music oh, yeah. videos and that was like the first time i ever saw that shit and then i started seeing it anime cons but yeah that's just the that's the next boy band yep evolution of the boy band yep and and then <clears throat> yeah then the other part of it is we need to get away from like the traditional idea of what a boy band is so that we can redefine the boy band without expectations from the previous generation which is all of our struggle as humans wow redefining ourselves without the expectation of the previous generation that's but why we struggle what if your we... parents fucked you up well that's the thing so and now you gotta live with the sins of the father like this song in metal gear redefine yourself sins of the father Brian. that's the whole point of the game the the whole point of the game is who do you want to be jack Fuck. redefine yourself i didn't kill him oh shit oh my god hello get up this is not gonna work out the way i planned it oh wait i've got i've got stun grenades huh huh suck on this whoa ooh, ooh, ooh. i fell okay there you go Bom, boom let's see let's see oh he didn't get it He's knocking. Ow. Am I going to go? Oh, wow. That camera changed. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I noticed earlier, too, in the cutscenes and codec calls, I don't think there's, like, voice audio coming through the game at all. I think it's coming in quiet, or, yeah, maybe you No, are, I don't uh... think it's coming in at all. I, I, I checked. Oh, I need, to, I need to equip a ration. I don't have them. It but... might be that uh, your PS3 is set for surround. Surround. I think it is, yeah. Oh fuck! Don't, don't get, get hit again! Don't get hit again! Boom! We don't get hit again. I need to fucking get back underground. What's the button for that? Back! Damn it! Damn it! Brian, I'm gonna fucking die. Oh, get in the hole! Oh my god! Get in the hole! Fuck! <laughs> Well, we're gonna save here so fucking happy. because it's about that time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us again on an exciting adventure of Metal Gear Solid Three. Oh, I want to end the show though because no, we I mean, are well like, as we go away. On. As we go. Oh on. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, let not me to save. save progress. Not let to, me yeah, save. Exactly. Save, uh, save for us. But yeah, as we go off, I want to just. 
I haven't touched this game in years. I would hope that you uh, remember the controls, because I do not clearly. Uh, you I might have to get us through next week when we come back live, because <laughs> this will be the third time I've done this mission. No! I think this will be three. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's, that, that's <laughs> I'm trying three. to give you the benefit of the doubt. but oh, uh, Let man. me make a save here, just in case. And I will lightning round one more caller in the Discord. Hell yeah. I'll give this over to Brian. Once that's Sweet. done, take it. I just want and to uh, let's just check in with uh, Cutie Max Racer. Yo. You're on the air. Uh, caller, go ahead. Thank you for calling from right, um, Control. My name is Linda. Help me help you. Hi, hi, Linda. Oh, Cutie Max. Is it Linda or Cutie? Is he there? Wow. Well, we had our fun, and now okay, it's okay, okay, okay. Now I'm oh, here. Now I'm fuck. here. Now I already started playing the song right. again. Go my ahead, bad, my go bad. ahead, cutie. Go ahead. So, I, this my questions for Brian. Um, so, I, you're you're a fan of uh, the Killing Joke, right? Uh, yeah. The Batman comic Batman story. Yeah. This is lightning round. Remember. I was just gonna ask him, like he if he likes reimagining of characters. Uh, what 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 about MGS do you like? That has to deal with that, like reimagining of Snake. Uh, what I love about uh, Metal Gear. And Sorry, that's kind of a poorly worded question. Very, very easy to respond. Is that each Snake is uh, specifically the same and also totally different because they are each their own personality. God, Brian knows how to kill them. Oh, very cool. Very cool. All right, thank you for taking my call. Thank you, You're Cutie Max. Thank you. He got it in. It was quick. I I, I kept on him. I was like really riding him on the speed he efficiently communicated the question brian you wrapped that up with a precise answer brilliant oh look at that what is that thing like an automatic Pro yeah i think it's probably a ak-47 so you're going into this without even trying to hide you're just like i'm killing them all cqc in, in this in this portion of the game when when it's a battle like a this is like, like a boss this, fight there's no reason to even mess around with stealth in this game because <clears throat> the cqc right. is that strong it's a bot all a i boss have to fight. do is walk up to them and press triangle and that or a circle and that's it what, what is it to go up uh triangle that's why action, i said triangle action button. Yeah, because there's one more person on the roof. He gets it now. Do we advance? And I have to get it again next week? Oh he my did say God. beforehand if I could unprone myself. Where is he? Okay. Yeah, there he is. He didn't even see you. Hey, buddy. <gasps> Boom. Okay, I like this tactic. I should I should try to implement that. You did it. You fucking advanced, Brian. Hey. There's where we're going to leave Cut off, it. actually. Uh, we do want to... Well, we want to watch all the cutscenes, so we will... We'll, We'll sit with this for another. Oh, this one's like a 31. Is it really? This one might be long. Okay, well then next week, I'm going to do exactly... I'm going to do is what I said. I'm <laughs> going to do... I am going to do exactly what Brian did. And we're going to see what's going on here. Oh, not yet. Uh, but Secrets. once I do it, we'll see it next week. Incentive for you to tune on in. Thank you for calling Control. My we name sure is do love you. Hi, see you next time. Um, We've got pests all over the house here. We just moved in. Okay, what type of problem is it that you're yeah, having? Little carpenter ants. And, you know, every time I sit down, one seems to sneak up the crack. You know, he's always in there. And I don't, I mean, they're, the ants are everywhere. Okay. Okay, I sit down. You know, I come in from work. One just climbs on up. You know, he's in there walking around. I don't, you know, they shouldn't be in there. Okay. Okay, he just slips up the cleft or in the crack. You know, okay? So what can we do to exterminate these? Okay, what I can advise you as far as carpenter ants, we do carpenter yeah. ants. So Would you get up on in there? Pardon me? Would you get in there and get them out? The technicians, possibly. What, what kind of tools would they use? Because I don't want them ripping me up. Good <laughs> morning, please. This is Diane. Avery? My husband dealt with you guys about a year back, so maybe I'm still on the file. Okay, repeat your name. Diane. How do you spell last name? Okay, your phone number? Okay. 4718. 4718? Yes. Now, would they be able to, I mean, I want them to get them out of the crack with no problem, okay? I don't want them tearing me up too bad because it's going to hurt, and I want to be able to give birth later, to tell you the truth. Okay. Give me a minute. I'll give, I'll give you all the time. And they slip in there. It's, it's like, I guess it's kind of fun for the bugs, you know? They're a little small, and they climb in there like it's no big deal, slipping around. So, okay. Well, I, I guess I'll be waiting for the estimate then, okay? Fuck. <laughs>
I just need your uh, beer phone or your um, information. This is your address. And, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Good time. Okay. Okay. Bye bye.